welcome to the all new new game Who Dis? Yeah. 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 Wow. We are pretty <sighs> fired up here in the studio slash our homes. Uh, this is an exciting night. Now, if you're a fan of the Glass Cannon Network, if you know what we do, hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. You're a member of the Nation. If you've never seen us before, then oh man, sit back, pop it open, a soda or a cold beer, and get ready for a fun time. We're going to be playing some cyberpunk Red tonight. Yeah, uh, if you don't baby. know me, oh yeah, a little, little bit of this tonight. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you don't know me, we don't have this. animated graphics. I yeah, just no, we yeah. with a nice electric guitar. We gotta do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> My name is Troy LaValley. I'm from the Glass Cannon Network. I'm joined tonight by Skid Marr and Joe O'Brien, two other founders of the network. Nobody cares about the three of us because they're here for our special guest tonight. Give it up for Kate Thomas and Francis Maram, everybody. Yeah. Woo -woo -woo. All right. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> excited to be here. here. This is uh, this is just wild that this show even exists. Uh, you know, I think everyone who follows us kinds of know, kind of knows why. But basically, when the, when the pandemic hit, we were just we we're playing a lot of Pathfinder, and we were like, "All right, we can't record our main shows because we can't get in the studio. Let's uh, let's just do some other shows from home. Let's do some other Pathfinder shows from home." And then Skid <laughs> got COVID, and we were like, "We need a replacement to the replacement show. Uh, what if we What if we finally do the thing that we always want to do? What if we like just learn a new game system and just start playing that. We'll call it uh, New Game Who Dis. It'll be great. Uh, and it ended up being our most successful show of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> And so it must have been around the fall when I was like, this needs to be a part of our 2021 lineup. I want to do this all the time. It was my New Year's resolution last year or the year before. I was like, I want to play more games, but we never get a chance to. We have a million Pathfinder podcasts, a Starfinder podcast. When we go to conventions, the last thing we want to do is learn a new RPG because we play them all the time uh, and, and record them. Um, so this is like a dream come true. And we wanted to start off the year with a little cyberpunk red. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. The plan for this show is we're going to really di dive into these systems as much as we can. We're going to play them for a few weeks. We're going to have new GMs uh, when we switch into another system, new players, new casts, new games. I really want to mix it up. But each game needs a few weeks to really learn it. We are not masters of this system. I've been sitting with this book since the day it dropped. I've probably forgotten more than I've learned. Uh, and everyone else has had the PDF. And we're all kind of figuring out. This is not, if you're here for like the exact rules of this game, you've come to the wrong place but my <laughs> my hope is that you can watch this and like us learn how to play and one of the ways you're going to learn to do that is we're going to build characters tonight live using <laughs> their session uh, live. Their, uh, the way they build characters yeah live. never done it before never, never done that before totally totally brand new that's the best. Can we all agree the best part of playing RPGs is building the character and everything Pretty else great. is garbage? Yes. Yep. <laughs> everything yes. else is just downhill and a chore. <laughs> this is the one good night that we'll have. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My first and only episode. <laughs> Sorry. I just feel like you, when you, the, there's a like, the, a new RPG is daunting. You see a book like this thick and you're like, how am I ever going to learn to play this, I, I don't, and I, if I'm going to invest that time, how do I even know this game's going to be good? Well, my hope is that, like, I know it's going to be good, um, that we can learn it together. And by we, I mean not only us sitting at the table, but you at home. But I want to, I want to talk about our special guests tonight. <laughs> Kate and Francis, this is this is so exciting. Kate, we, I, I can't even talk too much about this, but basically we met Kate about a year ago, almost to the day, and we were kind of working on a se secret project uh, that uh, COVID just punched right in the face and we couldn't do it. And uh, then we were like, well, it's nice meeting you. We'll see you never. Um, <laughs> and the whole, whole year I was like, I just, I got to find a way to get Kate back involved. And so when this show came up, I was like, episode one, we got to get Kate. Welcome to the show, Kate. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Tell us it. a little bit about yourself. I, am I correct in saying you're a net runner in real life? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, I'm a software engineer in real life. That's what I do for money. Uh, I live in New York. I live in Brooklyn. I've been here for over 10 years at this point, I think. Oh, wow. Um, I have a cat and a dog. They're really cool. What are their names? Finn, the human oh. dog. Yes. Tweak, the black cat, 
<laughs> she has CH and she's kind of wobbly. I also have a husband. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's hard, 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 hard to take <laughs> care of. Real hard to take care of. No, <laughs> Brooklyn, they call that the Brooklyn trifecta. <laughs> a cat, a dog, and a husband. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what, uh, what is your experience with RPGs? I, I know you play some Starfinder. How long have you been playing? Are you a video gamer? What do you do? I really like video games. I really like first person, I oh, know third person shooters where you can see yourself. And if it has mm. like a story element, I'm there for it. Um, I've played D and D before I've played dead sons, the first book. Um, yeah, I'm really Finder, excited to hey, start hey. playing a, an RPG again. Well, we're excited to have you. And um, if you make any mistakes, you won't be invited back. So okay, great. Yay. <laughs> no pressure, really. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> our next special guest needs no introduction. Actually, he does. Because <laughs> only, 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 uh, only uh, Joe Skin and I know him. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> Kate, over the past few hours. Uh, this is my good buddy, one of my oldest friends from when I moved to New York 20 years ago, Mr. Yes. Francis Murmur. How yes. are you, buddy? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm very good. It's good to be here, Troy. Ah. It is fantastic to be a part of this. This is definitely something I never knew anything about until like you unveiled this on me, like whenever you started. I mean, this has become a phenomenon that I, I don't even I don't even know about. I need to find out, basically, and that's part of the reason I'm here. You're jumping <laughs> to the deep end tonight, buddy. Uh, and uh, but don't worry, we'll we'll take it easy on you. Please, uh, I'm very I can't new. say your character will survive through uh, the episodes that we do, but uh, it's going to be a good time. Francis, how long how long have we known each other? I was thinking about it today. The the day I met you, wow. basically, I, I was going to Columbia, and after I finished my first year of grad school, I needed a job, and I walked into a video store that was like being opened. The next day, I was like, "Yes, hi." I used to work at Blockbuster. They're like, "Yeah," and so I worked there the whole summer, and then I went back to grad school. And then you started working right as I left, and then I came back for Christmas break. And the yes. night that I met you, we closed the store together, and then we ended up in an apartment in Chelsea till like five a.m. <laughs> yes. Just boozing and having a there good time. Was, We've been best friends ever since. It's, it's it was remarkable. I remember that. I remember hearing like when I started at Kim's and like working there, and they were everybody was like, "Oh, you gotta meet Troy. You gotta meet Troy. He's gonna be." Uh, he's like, you know, "We could do this uh, movie tennis." It's like, I'm like, "Oh, this sounds great." He's a real piece <laughs> yeah. of shit. And the first night, the first night, I, I don't remember. Anything that happened after we closed that store. <laughs> like two drinks I remember and then I'm you like, were standing in a corner all by yourself, just like singing Sinatra. <laughs> and I was like, with a bass guitar. A you had bar. a bass guitar that you didn't know how to play. And you were just <laughs> singing Sinatra. That's cl- that's, that was that very well definitely happened, I'm sure. It happened, if it didn't happen that night, it happened uh, some other nights, many other nights. But uh, yeah, man, it, it's been long, 2001. And where are you now? Where are you living? I know, but for the people I am watching. out here in lovely Hawaii, Oahu, Hawaii. Ooh, yeah. Which island? That is Oahu. The Oahu. Island. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. And what island are you <laughs> in? Yeah. Sounds I, lovely. I, I, which island? <laughs> I hear it's beautiful. Today. Which island oh, are you in? <laughs> and does the island have a name that you're habitating? <laughs> what would be the name of the island? <laughs> Do you live on? <laughs> no, I just made that name up. Actually, I'm in a non-disclosed, uh, undisclosed uh, <laughs> South Pacific island. Is that a, uh, you just don't need to know where I am. Okay. Is it like it's one fun. of the island? At least one of the islands is just, or at least was at one point, just dedicated to being a target practice for the Navy. <laughs> There's a few islands like that actually yeah. throughout the South Pacific. Yeah, that are just yeah, they just blow it up. They blow like up bombing good. runs for like naval planes. Up good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, a lot of military out here, but you know, but um, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful place, and I'm lucky to be here. It's expensive, but it's beautiful. Well, <laughs> when uh, I'm sure we have some listeners from Hawaii, uh, we will. Uh, Invite them to your apartment. Um, COVID yeah. is over, and they can teach it. you RPGs in person. And you can Please. show them how you slap the bass. You slap the bass. <laughs> you slap a little bass, Francis. Try to go home, slap a little bass. Um, well, I mean, we have been excited about this for a long time. We all have varying sort of experiences with cyberpunk like i've never played any cyberpunk games but i've just been uh, i think this is just a nerd thing i don't any nerds that are like i don't care for cyberpunk everybody gets into it at one time or another whether you're reading philip k dick or you like struggle through neuromancer and then you're like oh snow crash is way more uh uh readable and uh 
I, I just never played the game. Skid, you've been playing since the original Cyberpunk. Yeah, I still have. I don't have my original book, but I, I have my 2020 book still. Uh, this is that I bought in 1990. I still got that. But uh, yeah, I actually haven't played that much. I read the book a lot more than I actually got a chance to play it. But I've, I love Cyberpunk. I love the genre. I love, I'm a massive Blade Runner fan. I know Kate and I disagree on that. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, <laughs> that I like the sequel. I like the sequel. She actually, I don't mean to call her out, but she did say when we first met, oh, she's just like, you said, I don't like movies. You said, I don't like movies, which is very straight. To me, that's like somebody saying, I don't like liquids. <laughs> that's totally fine. Kate, okay, what if she they did like, a reality show that was cyberpunk themed? Would you be into that? Yeah. <laughs> The Real Housewives of Night City. The Real Housewives of Night City. Yes. Well, there's the name of the episode. (laughs) (laughs) But I've loved, I've loved the setting. I love, I love cyberpunk. I love like cybernetic enhancements. And you know, we did play Shadowrun, which is uh, together the the three of us, which is a little bit different because it involves magic. I like my peanut butter separate from my chocolate. I don't want. I don't like really having magic in my sci-fi setting. This is a much better setting for me. I'm very excited. So you're a racist. You're a racist? Exactly. <laughs> you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A very racist, racist, yes. Uh, you know, that's a around. really important point, I think. And, and I didn't. I, I, I never thought about it until you just said that. That's the big difference. Like, what makes cyberpunk cyberpunk is there's no magic. It is just a dark, desperate world where people are killing each other in the streets and trying to survive. And it's not like, I cast a spell on you. No, you might have some super awesome technological advancement that does something akin to a fireball spell, but it's not magic. It is all, uh, it's evolution and de-evolution at the same time. And I'm excited to play. Uh, Joe, I'm assuming you've never read any cyberpunk thing or seen any cyberpunk movies. You you know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of the reasons I'm absolutely terrified uh, about tonight. I am not familiar with the uh, the setting. I mean, I I, I did read uh, Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, and I watched Blade Runner, but I you know I haven't read or watched it in 20 years. And I uh, I watched uh, Blade Runner 2049, liked it, and but I mean like I don't know it's. It's hard for me to wrap my head around. Like, I, I do like the basic concepts of like dark future. You know, everybody's. I love the megacorp concept. That's my favorite thing. It's like where everything is run by corporations because that to me really seems like the way it's going to go down. <laughs> right. Like, I really feel like these things, they're onto something, these yeah, cyberpunk seriously. guys. <laughs> well, you know, I mocked you, and we played a ton of Android Netrunner together. And even though that's, that's just a card game. That's what really got me into it. It's very immersive. If yeah, you let and it so, yeah, so that's what really got me, got me into the setting more so. Uh, I just, I have a hard time wrapping my head around all, like the level of, urban intensity and like just the like the lawlessness and the i don't know it's hard to understand like well how do you how does anyone have a norm any kind of a normal life like how are you a child in this world like i don't i can't i'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it and so i don't know but it's cool to be like oh i get to play a cool character with a you know a cool slick nickname that looks amazing and like uh and a lot of things as we've talked about this game have come through especially talking to skid you know just about how how much of it he said this and then i read it in the book about how much is dedicated to fashion and style and stuff like that and i obviously am horrific in every aspect of that in real life <laughs> and so it's funny it's like i'm also horrible at swinging a sword so it's bringing those fantasy elements in like being fashionable and cool uh is going to be an interesting thing to explore uh so yeah i i've i've checked some out i'm not familiar at all with this setting and so i've been trying to read it but there's a lot of history here it is dense yeah. there's a lot that happened in this world over the course of the many books that have been written uh and it's it, it's a really interesting world to play in i feel like but generating a character in it i don't know i'm a little nervous because i'm like i don't understand all the nuances of this extremely complicated city yeah, it's it's daunting. When you read like the histories in this book, it takes up 40, 50 pages. You're like, how do I, I'm going to make a mistake. But they even say like, just you create your night city. You take some of our night city and you make your night city. That's, and if you don't want to be, if you want to do it in Atlanta or in Boston, do that. Do it wherever you want to do it. That's, it's, it's your game. In uh, Boswash? Boswash. Boswash. Boswash Corridor. <laughs> I love that. There is. It's actually funny. The official timeline 
because the the this later version cyberpunk red takes place in the future not in necessarily in our future now but in the future of the cyberpunk 2020 timeline which that timeline officially diverges from our own uh earth timeline in 1990 with a a the 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 vice president of the United States leads a shadow coup against the president with the help <laughs> of the five, the gang of five, which is like the uh, uh, the NSA and the DEA, CIA, FBI. And, you know, who was vice president in 1991? Dan Quayle. So it's like, it's so perfect. <laughs> Canonically, Dan Quayle led a shadow coup of the government, and that's what led to this dystopian George H.W. Bush. Yeah, that's, that's so hilarious. perfect. I just I love that little detail. <laughs> I, I know that. That's amazing. Yeah, just reading through that book, I I didn't. It, it's it is so dense, but there's so much of it that is kind of like rooted in in you know like kind of contemporary life in the world. You know what I mean? Like the way the governments interact and the way like, you know, the whole story evolves. It's totally based in what could be, a, you know, a possible future or a possible reality, you know, it's, it's so crazy. Yeah. It's and I think that plausible. that's a good, yeah. And, and that's what I think happens when you take the magic out of it too, is like, if you take the magic out of it and then you allow, uh, this, like the, the logical extremes of the increasing power, political power and economic power and influence of corporations. And you just like, let it go to its logical extreme. This is simply what you get is like, they have their own police forces. They have their own territories that they own. You work there and live there and pay them rent. And you know what I mean? Like it, it makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't it be that way? It's it you know, the most advantageous to the most powerful people. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I just love the idea that the, one of the largest events is 2020. One is it 2021 or 2022 that there's the nuke 2021. Uh, yeah. 2021. 2021 there's a, a nuke goes off in night city and it is a, a corporation on corporation nuke you know yeah. what I mean? which you never think about that it's always like oh it's gonna the be this government or that war. government that was the yeah, culmination the fourth, of the fourth yeah. corporate war right yeah so yeah. i just hey. think that that concept is so cool and i'm just ready to sink my teeth in yeah the only thing the jetsons got right was the camera phone Right. Uh, <laughs> everything else in our life is heading towards uh, the time of the red. <laughs> it's going to be much more accurate. Uh, well, I'm glad you guys are excited. I'm excited. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a new layout tonight. As you can see, our overlays look beautiful for New Game Who Dis. Uh, the audio sounds crisp. And that's all because now we have a dedicated producer for these what? shows. And you might know him because he just went full time with the Glass Cannon Network. Mr. Grant Berger, Grant, are you yeah. there, my good buddy? Grant What's going on, you cyberpunkers and rocker boys? <laughs> How y'all doing tonight? Producer extraordinaire. I love oh, it. Oh, oh, the ones and twos. It's thrilling to be behind the scenes. I'm happy to be in a support role. Uh, Troy will probably yell at me a couple times throughout the show, but when I'm not on screen, I'm eating pizza. So that's a that's a big plus. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that is nice. Nice uh, bonus. Delicious. Well, so delicious. I, I, and so it's just such a dream uh, to have uh, Grant just have to focus on producing. We've never done that. We're always wearing 19 hats. So thank you, Grant. And thank you for making us uh, look beautiful and sound beautiful. Um, uh, I'm going to jump in here, if you don't mind, Troy. Are you going to talk about our good buddies? Oh, our new talk about good our, buddies? Our new good buddies! Please. So, uh, our good friends at our Telsorian Games, who uh, we talked to about this late last year. We were very excited to play, very excited to do this, and they could not have been more on board to help us get this thing up and running. And so, thank you so much to them for all their support. Uh, and one of the things they wanted to do, which aligns right with what we want to do, is not only teach you the game, but get you the game and uh, and have you guys play in it. So tonight and over our next two episodes, we're going to do multiple giveaways uh, of uh, not only the hardcover core rulebook, which is sold out on their site. You can't get uh, it. But also some PDFs of the core rulebook as well. And, uh, and this is the big one. The third night, the finale of this story that we're going to tell, uh, that night, if you're watching there live, we are going to give away an all-access pass to the entire digital library of all Artosorian games or RTG, Whoa. which I'll, I'll use uh, to, to abbreviate them. Um, it's over 30 books in PDF form, over $500 value, uh, an incredibly generous gift for them to donate to us to then pass on to you. And so thank you guys so much. Uh, we're excited to share this with the community. So, uh, 
you need to watch. You need to uh, pay attention to the chat because we're going to drop that link for the contest uh, in the chat. The contest is really you're going to click on this link. It's going to take you to a site where you just have to input information and you can enter. There's also there's a couple little things that it'll do. It'll you get some more entries if you follow us on Twitch or if you follow us on Twitter, stuff like that. But you can choose your own level of involvement. And uh, the more things that you do, the more entries you get into the contest. And then. What do we say, Troy? By the end of the stream, we'll announce it in chat, right? We'll yeah, announce just two winners keep your tonight. Eye the chat. Yeah, so one winner is going to get uh, a mailed copy of the hardcover core rulebook right from RTG and uh, a PDF as well. So that's one prize. And then a second winner is going to get a PDF of the core rulebook. So uh, thank you again to RTG for supporting the stream. And thanks to you guys for tuning in and watching. Stay tuned. Watch the chat. Uh, our good buddy Brennan, uh, our uh, community manager, will drop it in there a couple times throughout the night so that you can uh, enter. Uh, enter. Enter to win. Yeah. And this book is gorgeous they really did a, a hell of a job on this and uh yeah i think you'll be excited to play it uh after seeing us play maybe you'll know how and then you can just skip to the last chapter yep yep um anyway sorry i, I was gonna say something but i don't want to say it. no go Forget ahead it. you Ooh, had wow. something on your mind get it out you <laughs> interrupted no. both kate and skid <laughs> it's, it's all good i had a question and i answered it move on okay uh, I was going to, uh, I did have a question. I was yes, going to ask, the, the are, gla the back. are glass cannon employees eligible for the hardcover book? Because I do actually need one <laughs> and I would buy one, but you can't. Skip, stop putting so, entries into the chat. We will, uh, we'll make some phone calls for you. <laughs> It's just well, so cool for me because I've literally been a fan of this company for 35 years. And so <laughs> now to be doing something in any kind of partnership with them is so exciting. I'm so I'm just so pumped tonight. I'm yeah, just, and they're really so cool. kind and so easy to work with. So yeah. it's just it's great. People like that in the gaming industry, I just love, and that's why I love being a part of it. And uh, it's 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 really awesome. And so yeah, Skid, all you got to do is subscribe to our Twitch channel. <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> wait, let me. You'll be entered to win. on Twitter. You probably get an extra entry. But best of luck to you, Skid. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm sure there's only I'll a couple people crossed. watching. I'll pull your, it your for you, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, I want to say Mike Pondsmith is like one of the creators of this game. Is an OG, like one of the great RPG originators in the entire hobby. So it's so cool to be doing something with, with, with his work and everything too. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And in my preparations for this, I've been watching him run people through cyberpunk games, you know, yep. but you know, like we were saying before we even went live, the only way to learn how to play this, you can read all day long. You should kind of just play. <laughs> so how about we play some cyberpunk red, everybody. Now ship in, uh, <laughs> I really want all of these new game who disses to start with character creation because it's our favorite part. And, you know, you really get to learn the system and then we're going to jump into a scenario that's going to play out over the next uh, few weeks. And then we'll play another game and we'll do the same thing. Now, if you guys like Cyberpunk Red, if we like Cyberpunk Red, we'll bring it back to New Game Who Dis, and these characters already, already exist. Probably not all of them. Some of them are going to die. This is a very harsh, unforgiving game. People die all the time. You're walking down the street, there are just dead people laying in the gutter constantly. That's Night City. Um, <laughs> but, when like we come I back, said, so dark. how are you a kid in this city? I, I yeah. can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> Daddy, what's that? Uh, it's, it's, no, you grow up fast. I think there's a line I, I read today. It was like, when you're walking through Night City, sometimes you'll, you'll, you know, it's, there's garbage everywhere and there's dead people in the streets. And you might hear a bunch of kids laughing in the distance, but they're not laughing at the things kids laugh at in the suburbs. They're laughing at things that are horrible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, kids exist, but they grow up real fast in Night City. Uh, <laughs> Let's just jump right into character creation because this is my favorite part. And like, honestly, the story is driven so much by what's about to go down. There's a whole section in character creation where you're going to be determining who your best friends are. Maybe you have lovers. Maybe you have family members. Maybe you don't. You've got enemies. You're going to roll for that. And those become part of the, the fabric of the story we're about to tell. This isn't like, at least in my experience so far, which is very limited, this isn't like Pathfinder or, or even Dungeons and Dragons where it's like, here's a 40-page scenario to run. It's not like that at all. It's like, here's a one-page idea of a story that you might want to do something with. Uh, you guys, your characters drive the story. So let's 
figure out who these people are. Mm. Uh, we're going to start, and we're just going to go straight through this. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to build characters. Uh, well, three different ways, really. There's the street rat way, the edge runner way, and then I think the third one's called complete package. Complete package is for like people who play the game a lot, or people who have a lot of time that can like customize every little thing. Street rat is like the the quick and dirty uh, way of doing it. We're going to be doing edge runner, which I think is a nice balance between the two. Um, and uh, what is the difference? You'll you'll see as we go along. The first thing you got to do though is pick your role. This is your your class. There are so many cool roles. You can be a solo, you can be a tech, a med tech, a fixer, a nomad, uh, a net runner, an exec, a lawman. There are not endless possibilities. I think there's about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's You've about covered all of them. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> um, and millions more. <laughs> and millions more in all the supplements that are coming out. Um, so I'm just going to sit back. What do you guys want to play? Kate, what do you, uh, you got something you might want to play for us? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> since I'm already sort of a net runner in real life, I kind of want to play the exec. Ooh, that is spicy. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm feigning like I don't know that this is what you want to play because we <laughs> talked about this a very, very tiny bit. And I was like, that is a bold move because exec isn't even in the jumpstart kit. The Cyberpunk Red jumpstart kit came out at Gen Con, what, a, two years ago? Or a, I don't even know what year it is because of COVID, but like not- It was this year, wasn't it? Or no, was it last year? It was, yeah, there was no Gen Con this year. Um, and there was only access to a few classes. Exec- is only available in the red. So yep. uh, Kate is just leveling right up to pro streamer <laughs> and going with the exec. Do you, what do you know about the exec? Uh, in cyberpunk or just executives in general? <laughs> just, I really about you executives know what? in general. I would love to join in on talking shit on executives. <laughs> for a while. I used to work in the corporate world for a long time. Please, Jeff. I mean, I think, the reason why I wanted to choose this was because... I mean, I obviously don't fit the build of an executive, but I did used to work at a very, like, top financial company. Um, so I kind of want to... Which like, one? Use... <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> I mean, if you look Morgan me up, you'll, you'll find it. But, like, <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to use what I gathered from working in those corporate environments and just play a terrible character. <laughs> just putting an exec nice. into the mix immediately changes everything because well, you're right. you're part of the enemy yeah. you know you work for the corpse so one thing we're gonna have to determine by the end of the night why are the rest of you scumbags working with an exec is she moonlighting uh with with these losers uh may trying to make the next big score or are you guys uh company men mm. let's well, find out i don't know uh, Skid, uh, you, uh, man, I don't know anything about your character, but I know you are so fired up. What role did you choose? <laughs> I'm very excited. I've been excited for like three weeks. I like, bing, it like came to me and I was like, oh yes, I'm so excited. So my character is a tech so he's uh, mm. f Mr. Fix-It kind of guy, just uh, do all things technology. He can repair it. He can jury-rig it. He can invent it. Mm. It's a very cool class. It's, it's, I, it, when I first read it, I was like, well, it's kind of like what you play on Androids and Aliens, but it's really not at all. It's yeah. very different in the Cyberpunk It's more world. engineer than, than operative for Starfinder, but uh, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I won't get into any more yeah, of the yeah, details, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it's it fits into what I kind of had in mind very well. So, yes. well, I'm sure you won't disappoint. Uh, you do the exact opposite, uh, <laughs> Francis. What oh. you you were one of the first ones. It was like I've got three concepts for yeah, character. Yeah. You threw I knew it down pretty quick, uh, <laughs> but uh, it came down to the nomad. It, it, it like like Kate. It just uh, it was closer to my current lifestyle and experience. <laughs> 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 Traveling from city to city. You're in a Mad Max gang? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consistently wear uh, old football pads uh, as I drive around <laughs> with the, the blowtorch top off of my, my yeah. uh, so old Chabot. Francis Tilcutter Marina. <laughs> Wahoo's a rough island, man. <laughs> it, gets, it gets rough out here. And which um, island are you on again? <laughs> oh, and what island is Oahu on? <laughs> um, nomad. What, what do you know about the nomad? They're um, they're very 
well, they're transporters. They 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 are like the life's blood between the different cutoff uh, cities between like the free states and the and the and the boss wash uh, uh, corridor. Uh, they they smuggle. They they transport on land, sea, and air. They've got families that they kind of like use. They're like, I guess mob like. I guess I don't. I'm still not quite sure. It's still it's still something I'm I'm digging into. But I love the idea of this like, you know, band of like smugglers and 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 gearheads that are just out on the road like or out on the sea whatever uh transporting what you need we got what you need yeah it's part it's part mob like and it's part like we need to band together to survive (laughs) yeah exactly Um, but yeah there is definitely a mob uh feel to it it's like oh you want some vehicles yeah you better talk to the blah 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 family (laughs) yeah uh i think this is perfect i didn't even think until you said that though of how uh akin this is to your life over the past 20 years (laughs) oh yes oh i'm a nomad i am a nomad i'm usually not smuggling what your address is i have so many addresses is for you uh, yeah I, I gave up at least i kept the same phone number though that's that's, yeah, that's good that's I, good that's that's for you i did that for you <laughs> mine were uh mine were shut off and uh and then uh, went to collections a lot of times and then i would just get a new number <laughs> yeah. uh, i'm very just, proud that i've had this one for uh, as long as i have string from yeah. now on Here you go. that's all you got <laughs> uh joseph i i knew before i even asked you uh what uh class or what role you would take um I just had a feeling you were going to go this route. Let let the people know. I bet they've already guessed. Yeah, I went. Uh, I went Netrunner, but it wasn't my first choice. It did not. It totally surprised me because when I was going to go into it, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do full on like street fighting martial artist badass <laughs> street samurai. Uh, yeah, and you were like, that's called a solo, and I was like, done. <laughs> but then I saw the thing about, uh, which was outside of the Jumpstart kit, right? Lawman, isn't that outside of the Jumpstart? Yeah. So then I yeah. saw the thing about Lawman, and I started reading that. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, too. Like, you could be Corp. You could be, like, roving sort of city police. Like Don uh, the Bounty Hunter? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can also just, like, war, you know, work on the sly for gigs and stuff. And I was like, this is cool, too. Uh, I liked both those concepts. What got me into Netrunner, honestly, was... The game Android Netrunner is my probably my most experience with the cyberpunk genre. And so I get a lot of those concepts, but reading the rules for net running is what sold me on it. So I was like, well, let me just let me just take a look at the chapter. And I started reading the, the mechanics and I was like, I love everything about this. <laughs> and it all made a lot of sense to me because it's all really comes right out of the same sort of stuff of Neuromancer and, and Netrunner and stuff. So uh, so I decided to go with that. So, yeah, well, uh, I, I just also didn't know if there was going to be any net running in the demo. You know what I mean? Because it was a whole different aspect of the game. And, uh, and so I was like, is this something that's viable? And you were like, yeah, of course it's viable. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. Yeah, that's really on me. It's like, if there's something you want to do, uh, well, well, let's do it. We'll we'll figure out a way to do it. This is a very, and maybe this should, this should be the way in all, in all the games that we play, but other games just feel so restrictive. And maybe that's just a mindset we need to change, but playing a lot of blades in the dark that we've played this past year, playing some Delta green in the past year, these games lend themselves to like, what do you want to do? All right, let's figure out how we can do that based on the mechanics. So, yeah. and, and likewise, you're like, I want to be a net runner, but what if there's no chance to net run? Well, that's on me and you to figure out how to make this work. Cause you're like, can I hack into this? Yeah, let's, let's try it. Oh shit. You ran up against some black guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, that's another thing is there are familiar for those not familiar with cyberpunk red. There are very familiar tropes of net running that they've tossed out in this game. Yeah. Which the is net very is cool. Gone. The there net is no shattered. Net. <laughs> so yeah, you're net running, but you're you can only net run in local networks. And so you have to physically get your meat in the building in yeah. order to net run within a, a certain area, which is very cool. So you have to be at an access point. And then the other cool thing is that the the net running actual hacking aspect, it overlays like AR over your what you're seeing your so you space. can both see what's actually around you and be jacked in and see the overlay mm-hmm. of the net in the local area uh so the the familiar like kind of you know jacking in and going unconscious right. is not it's a very different thing now very cool yeah when i think of net running i think of a guy sitting at home in his computer and, he just, <laughs> and then he like runs up against some black guys and gets his brain fried and dies right. here you're you put some goggles on that lets you see everything and you're jacked in in the meat space and then you get your brain fried right yeah you still get your brain fried but now you can 
also just get shot by bullets of the guards that are in the room. <laughs> it's more like Minority Report than Matrix. Yes. Exactly. Yes. We're going to exactly. yes. oh, die goo. in such cool ways. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's part of the thrill. Yes. This is going to be great. But wow. the beauty of the system, you're like, oh, great, now I can be a lawman. Let me roll up a lawman. Uh, you know, and so you spoke about your net running ability. And so each of your roles comes with a role ability. And the way the game works is a character creation, they suggest that you start at role ability four. The closest uh, sort of analog I can think of is like, that's kind of like your level, but it's not, it's not really, it's a little bit different. And your role ability is like your superpower. And so for Joe, as a net runner, uh, you, your role ability is you can net run, you can do right, runs. Right. Like you can't net run. With any other class, with right. any other role, unless you begin, once you already have experience, multi-classing. Then you have to take a, a, a level of net runner so that you can get access to the ability then to net run. So each role has a thing that no other role can do, which is pretty yeah. cool. And so Joe's is net running. Uh, Skid, I, I emailed you about this yesterday because I'm like, this is... <laughs> crazy and would be amazing in a long-term campaign but no doubt you have some cool ways that's going to be implemented talk about your role ability so my role ability is maker it's called maker and it basically allows me to either augment improve or invent uh the either existing devices or invent new devices and what? there's a bunch of different ways you can apply it with existing stuff. It's pretty cool. And the invention thing, they even say in the book, it's like, this is a little overpowered in the wrong hands, but uh, <laughs> there's uh, no better hands than mine. I know. I was just going to say, so, like, skid with this power. It's, it's literally the power of the gods. You literally have been granted the power of the gods. It's funny. Yeah. They, they even say, they're like, you got to work with your GM because you might want to try it out for a few sessions and the GM will be like, you can't do that anymore. We can't change yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. But it's down. in the book. It'll be on the like, pair forever. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, this, you've broken the game with that invention. Uh, but it's cool. It's I can cool. like put add-ons onto like your all of you guys' weapons. Like I can put you know modifications onto them in different slots. I can improve your armor. There's just all kinds oh, of stuff I can so do. Cool. I'm Dude. not going to worry about it tonight because I don't want to make things too crazy. But it is something that I definitely look forward to playing with uh, in future sessions. If oh, I survive. Yeah. If you oh, survive amazing. this, uh, this, these sessions, like in, in the downtime before your next big score, I can just see everybody coming out upgraded to the nines because <laughs> yeah. of your awesome. And tech. you have to pay for it. It's it's basically like crafting and in, in Pathfinder or anything else. There's a dollar value that you have to expend to be able to do whatever it is, and then you have to roll a skill or kill a skill check. But uh, but yeah, it's it can uh, can be pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Francis, Nomad uh, rollability called Moto, right? Yes, Moto. So uh, Nomads can call any vehicle in their family. So Nomads roll in families, whether it's like a couple of people or if it's like a dozen people or like a hundred thousand, like an army. For, uh, wow. they, they have like different families. So uh, depending on what level I'm at, I can call... A different vehicle i can upgrade a vehicle uh i can uh i can bring in multiple vehicles like like kind of a convoy or armada it's a kind team of, of motorcycles <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, just basically calling down the uh the the thunder mad max style uh, yeah. you know, with like the bus and like everybody like it's a, <laughs> it's um, a really cool can ability. you get me a truck with a gigantic <laughs> drum on it I can make that happen. He can yes. do that. He can do that. <laughs> not, a, not a rollability <laughs> four, but maybe five. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's That's exactly <laughs> what I want to see. So quick. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's very cool. And it's like one of those things, like as you level up, you get access to either more upgrades or you can take out more than one vehicle at a time. And then once you yeah. get to rollability 10, I think you're the leader of your own family and you oh. call the shots on uh, who gets what vehicle. So Don't it's a cool class. Like, don't have I also want a, a, a class here where I'm like, oh, that that's not a not a good class. They're all great. <laughs> I also want to jump in and say that despite having not too much cyberpunk uh, pop culture experience, I did love Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so many, right. many great times. Movie. Oh, so God, good. Amazing. Troy, did you sit and watch that? I did. I did. And uh, I only watched three movies a year, and that was one that I watched uh, two years <laughs> after it came out. <laughs> no movies. Uh, no. no movies. <laughs> 
I don't know. No. The, the Real Housewives of Thunderdome. Show <laughs> <watch that. laughs> the Real Housewives uh, of Pigtown. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Uh, Kate, sounds I awesome. saved you for I last because I think, at least in this uh, upcoming crew, the exec has... I'll say the best, but oh man, you've really you've really upped my work tally for the night with your rollability. Sorry. Jill, you don't even know what this is because you don't like spoilers. Go ahead, yeah, Kate. Yeah, I didn't read ahead. <laughs> so the execs get the team workability. Basically means I get a signing bonus, which is business wear. I get my own apartment that's really nice. I don't have to pay for. I get really good food. And at rank three, and we're going to be rank four, I get my first team member... So I basically have another character and I can shoot from a table. (laughs) Yeah. I have have a team member that's provided to me by the corporation I work for. (laughs) Direct report. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I can give them things to do and I can have like a bodyguard, like a tech, um, I could have my own net runner. She could have her own net runner. <laughs> yeah. And what am I doing here? <laughs> Which is what she chose. So Joe, you're I, obsolete. I choose my teammate and then Troy gets to play that team member and also roll the stats for them. So nice. excited to add that to the fold. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be so fun. I can't wait to see what you come up with. It's Yeah, no, it's going to be great. I have nothing else uh, to worry about. I'm excited to play. Uh, I love playing NPCs, so it'll be great. Uh, no, I think it's really, really cool. And I love this idea that they have built in where like you have to build up loyalty with this person. So the way I've decided that we're going to play is like when you ask little things like, hey, can you go do this for me? Can you do this? That's not a problem. But if you're like, hey, would you just kill that guy? you've got to roll for loyalty to see if they'll do it. And oh. you've got to build up the loyalty with this person. And then you That's get cool. bonuses to your roles to see if you do it. Now you may uh, gain negative loyalty with them if you roll poorly, or if you have bad role playing with them uh, to the point where they're like, I'd like to be reassigned. And then the corp will send out something else to you and like charge you uh, for the uh, mm-hmm. exchange fee. So it's one really, the, really uh, interesting. One of the losing loyalty things is that if I forget your birthday, Negative four. <laughs> wow. That's, That's amazing. amazing. That's, That's great. Amazing. <laughs> That's so good. Jeez, oh, right. your, uh, yeah, your direct report is just in a bar just talking <laughs> shit on you. To somebody else. <laughs> That's That's exactly. uh, yeah. Oh, God. It's a, Troy, you did not watch Succession, right? I watched the first three episodes. And so then, uh, this makes me think of Succession just because yeah. there are higher ups that ask their underlings to do <laughs> the shadiest things yeah. in terms of like illegal shredding documents, like <laughs> pushing over under the rug. <laughs> and they're they just gain like their loyalty to do ex- so. And then they exactly. end up doing these terrible things for them. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. I mean, oh, I didn't. I'm so glad I didn't read ahead. That is so exciting and so cool. That's really neat. <laughs> we kept the surprise. Uh, all right, so we've got Kate playing an exec, Francis the Nomad, Skid the Tech, and Joe the Net Runner. What a great team! <laughs> uh, let's run our life paths. I think this oh, is... This, it's certainly uh, one of the most important, if not the most important part of character creation. Stats are important, sure, but like the the, the system that we're doing character creation, you really can't have a bad character um, rolling up the stats. Your life path is who this character is. Um, Grant, why don't you go ahead and throw up page 45 of the C.R. Bizzle. That's B. If you're uh, <laughs> new to our streams. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna if you're be not jump- into the whole brevity thing. <laughs> it's money. It's a two-hour show. I gotta get get it out. With just the B. Part of this life path is like it goes from everywhere from your cultural origin all the way to like who's your mortal enemy, and so you can roll for them or you can pick them, and it's really up to you guys. If you're like, you know what, I'll roll, and you're rolling, I don't like that. You can roll again, or you can just be like, you know what, I'm just gonna be North American in this instance. Uh, you you have the options throughout the entire life path creation to, to either choose or roll or roll again. It's meant for you to build the character that you want to build, or also like, I don't know what I wanna build. Let's see what the dice say. Oh, that's my personality. All right, I'll role play that. So it's up to you guys. I'm not gonna push you one way or the other, but you're a coward if you don't roll. Um, <laughs> let's start with cultural origins. <clears throat> Anybody have any strong feelings about this here? Uh, or do you wanna just let the dice decide? I- I'm ready to let the dice decide. I'm, I'm off work. I rolled already. The red. Ooh, what'd you roll, Kate? <laughs> I have an eight. I have Southeast Asian. Ooh. Ooh. 
So well, that's interesting. Okay. I'm going to choose, it doesn't say here, but I'm going to choose Thai. As your language? Yeah, as or my as background your, and as my as language, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, because you when it comes with your cultural origin, you also get a, a language for free that you get four free skill points in. Uh, everyone knows street slang, so it's not like, oh, I don't speak Thai, I can't speak to Kate's character. No, everybody can speak common um, street slang, um, but she also knows Thai. Uh, she talked Thai very well. Um, what about you, Francis? You want to go roll? I'm going to roll. I got, I got a hot hand. I'm rolling right now. I got a one. I'm North Ooh, American. North American. And you're proud American. to be in North America. <laughs> you know. Proud to be in North, North America. You got a, a, a language that's jumping out at you or a, a cultural um, background? You know what? I, uh, I do think I want to speak. Oh, you know, they got Creole. They got Creole down here. Uh, yeah, they do. They have some Creole down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creole. I, I go get Creole. you some no match machines, bro. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't even know what that is. Uh, like Sound good. Sound good. That's good. I like it. I couldn't keep that up for That's a whole good. day. Oh, they, would, they would devolve into some kind of... <laughs> Like Jar Jar Binks language or something. I don't know. You know the character but, uh, that I played on you know Red what? Dead French. Redemption. I'll do French. I speak French. Okay. I you do? Speak French. I speak yeah, a little French. Oh, okay. French. I speak nice. a little French. Of course, in North America, yeah. I guess the yeah. Quebecois. <laughs> yeah. I love like it. That. I love it. <laughs> you know that the character that I did on Red Dead Redemption was a Creole character, right? No way. And so, yeah, like I played a background character. Oh, and that's so right. They had oh, me right. listening right. to like Landing. that. There's yeah, a random yeah, guy thieves, thieves landing, landing there all over the place. Play a little five five finger fillet with me. And he's like, oh, 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 I'll play a little five finger fillet with you. Uh, oh, and it was so funny. Keep... I was playing with Pat McGrath one night, and we were like, we're trying to find Troy's character so we could kill him. And we just kept checking. Where are you? Like, are you by the dock? Like, why? We kept texting back and forth. We couldn't find him. I, mean, I was like, I'm by the dock, but I'm not yeah, always I'm there. there. I'm not always uh, there. I, when I found myself, finally, I tied myself up, took myself out in the woods, and tortured myself to death because at the <laughs> end of my recording, they had me do like 10 minutes of just, oh, 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 no, don't you hit it now. And so I got to hear all of it until I killed myself. And then, the I was, yourself. then I was miraculously still there the next day. Um, anyways, check That's out Thieves great. Landing. Uh, skip. What are you? What are you going with? Uh, I am going with uh, Western European. Oh, yeah. Western European! I'm sure that fits into a backstory that you've already created. That will uh, put all other backstories to shame. Uh, language, English, English. Okay, right. I've heard of it. Yeah. Joe, uh, you want to roll? You want to pick? Uh, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick North American. <laughs> Okay. Right Keep it on, brother. Safe for myself. Right on, brother. And you are going Creole, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> you can be brother. English. I'll be the, I'll be the fancy Man, guy. Man, I He's wish I spoke a little Spanish so I could say Spanish. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go English. Okay. All right. So we have Thai, French. English and English. Okay, very odd. Right. This is, it's already cyberpunk. We're already there. You're already dressed. Uh, let's go to the next page. This is personality. I mean, huge. Don't bury the lead on personality. This defines, or can define. You can ignore it. Uh, but I think it's fun to like, if you're shy and secretive, play that. Uh, if you have, uh, to me, this is like, I don't know how to role play this character. I don't know who this character is. We'll start here. Uh, yeah. Francis, you want to roll? You want to? Yeah, no, I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling it all because I. Yeah, this is uh, this is so new to me. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna let it let it happen. It's fun to roll dice. <sighs> oh shoot! Sorry, it didn't land right. It was landed on my crack shit. die. Oh, crack die. Yeah, the old crack, crack die. die. Hold on. Oh wow, I got a one again. Ooh, Ooh. you are shy and secretive. Oh, shy and secretive. Holy crap! Shy and secretive Frenchman. Bite. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hiding behind that mustache? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yes, I am shy and secretive. That's great. Um, I get, yeah, I guess that's the role I get. I don't know. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But uh, I said I was going to roll. I'm going to stand by that. I'm going to stand by, by the dice. Right. Uh, Skip, what do you got? Uh, friendly and outgoing. Oh, okay. Friendly and outgoing. Perfect. Um, what about you, Kate? Seven, uh, silly and fluff headed. 
<laughs> Silly and fluffy. Really executive types. <laughs> Personality. Classic Holy executive. Fuck. Be surprised. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's, she is so silly. Uh, <laughs> Joe, what did you, uh, you're going to roll uh, here? Here we go, yeah. You're going to roll. Hate whatever you roll, uh, you're going to Nine. Hate. Intellectual and detached. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. That's perfect for a net runner. <laughs> you guys can't see Grant just shaking his head like, oh, that's going to be terrible. <laughs> an intellectual and detached net runner. All right. Uh, next page. Maybe just as important, your personal style and the affectation <laughs> you are never without. Uh, also, make sure you're recording these on your character sheet. Uh, at the end of the session, I'm actually going to uh, ask you to send me these character sheets and we'll share them online. Uh, it, but it, really, it's mainly for me to build the story out as we play over the next couple of weeks. Um, all right, you guys can just roll on your own and tell me what you roll um, here on clothing style. Okay. <laughs> so important. Yes. It sounds silly, but like in cyberpunk, this is as important as what gar- gun you carry. I got bag lady chic. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Bag lady you chic. Shy and secretive I, Frenchman. Yes. <laughs> yes. The secret of Frenchman. Dressed with the bag, bag lady, lady chic. chic. I'm a little, you know, gender neutral. It's all good. You know, we're fluid out here. It's fine. You sport the uh, derelict look. Yes. <laughs> you can also, uh, if you, you like, roll another chic. D10 for the uh, hairstyle, <laughs> if you want. Très chic. Très, très chic. What'd you get, Kate? Um, I rolled Urban Flash, and I'm going to keep that because I feel like I can make it work with being sort of businessy at the same time, and short curly hair. Short curly hair. Oh, I like that. Mm. Uh, the Urban Flash will offset your light fluff-headedness. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys can roll another D10 for the hairstyle or just pick it. I mean, this doesn't it feel like you're building? Uh, I do, I'm playing a lot of Demon Souls, and the first hour I played was just building the character. Like, what kind of what color hair should I have? What, that's what this is. I, I love that you can it. roll on this stuff. I think it's so fun. I mean, I, I, we you know obviously we've built dozens and dozens and dozens of characters, uh, and it's it's always fun to do and create everything yourself. It's kind of neat to not create it yourself and then like have to see how it evolved and then play it. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like, this isn't quite a pre-gen. It's a little different. You feel like you had some impact on it. You know what I mean? Because you rolled the die. Right. But then you put all the pieces together in your own way. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's fun to do an outside-in build. Like, build the outside and now, now you know yeah, kind of the basics and you bring them to life. Right. Uh, Skid, what did you get for clothing and hairstyle? Uh, so my clothing, I guess it would fall under generic chic. He's basically always seen in either a Hawaiian shirt or like a vintage bowling shirt. <laughs> and He's like, the dude? Yeah, yeah but like, the like dude. tight leather pants or like tight uh, black ripped jeans. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and uh, Francis, what's your hairstyle? Did yeah, you- I forgot to mention. I'm going to pick that one because... I, I don't I don't feel like wild colors is enough mohawk I'm gonna pick the mohawk that's classic nice. I think classic. it will compliment so the bag good. lady chic so so yeah. <laughs> just a bag lady chic with a mohawk <laughs> and a big puffy mustache uh, Joe did you tell me your clothing hair style I didn't, uh, yeah, I and I, but I told you before we recorded that I was not going to roll it because I had already done the, the pre-gen stuff, gear stuff for the character sheet because, you know, that's a lot of work. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to roll it. I'm so happy with my roll that, like, I have to change everything because I rolled an eight and it's gang colors. So I want to have an intellectual and detached North American gang color wearing that are of signs. Dangerous, and then violent, rebellious hair is a... F- I rolled a five. <laughs> Bald, bald, bald. <laughs> it fits. It, I love it. I love Just it. Close your eyes. Uh, you can see, see what this person looks like. Already seeing this netrunner coming together. Yeah. Right uh, awesome. All right. What is the affectation you're all never without? Uh, we'll go around the horn here. Uh, Kate. One tattoos. So tattoos. I'm thinking like she's just got like a back, a full back piece that isn't always visible, but because corporate. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's not. And if she's wearing like a a, a a dress that's open all the way to the back, then everybody knows. If she's out on the street in her urban flash wear, maybe you can see it. But in the boardroom, when she's got her jacket on, yeah, I like it. I like, I it. like I can it. Picture it. I could just close your eyes and get into this, guys, because it's all right there. <laughs> Joe, what's you? Uh, what's your affectation? Uh, all right, here we go. Rolling the five nose rings. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. Nose rings. Gang colors. Bald. Dude, this is so hilarious. I would never picture this in my life making a character. It's so terrifying. I would not so want to see like, this. And he's like a <laughs> nerd with his oh glasses. My. Oh, God. Intellectual and detached. <laughs> uh, Skip, what'd you get for affectation? So I actually have a couple of the things on this list. I have uh, tattoos. I have, like, tribal tattoos on one oh, arm. Oh, look at you, went all And, up. like, yeah, crazy, <laughs> like, Whoa. sleeve tattoos of both arms. I have fingerless right. gloves. <laughs> and the other thing that he is all never seen without he has a necklace with a guitar pick in the middle of it and on either side are a couple of what looks like shark's teeth or something I love it nice. I love it it's so awesome nice. specificity awesome. will always win <laughs> really? uh, Francis what about you for affectation uh, affectation I got uh, tongue or other piercings. So oh, yeah. <laughs> got some choices. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely got the tongue piercing. Start and with the I, tongue I and see least, what happens. Yeah, I at least have the uh, the the uh, at least one row of my ear pierced, like just a full row of piercings in in one ear. Right. Uh, I'm gonna say the left ear. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perhaps you can oh. even parlay at the court of Prince Albert. <laughs> <laughs> they do say oh, the tongue is it. the gateway. Well, I'm gonna wait for the upgrade. I mean, yeah, that's gonna be on the upgrade. Right. Um, so have a cyber <laughs> cyber situation going on down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, nose rings, tattoos, tattoos, fingers, fingerless gloves, a necklace uh, with a guitar pick and shark teeth, and oh my God. a tongue and ear piercing that we can see. Let's move on to yeah. motivations and relationships on uh, page 48. Wow, this uh, is so cool just looking yeah, at this. I'm like, huge. every one of these things is so exciting. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see And really, this, this should build the story. Like, if I was good at what I do, and I'm not, um, but if I was, if I put the time in, uh, then I should be building scenarios where these things come into play. Um, so what do you value most, and how do you feel about most people? Um, just roll them on your own time and, and let me know your results. All right, uh, rolling. What do you value the most? One money. That was yeah. easy enough. I knew that before you even rolled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> money. And then <laughs> how do you how do you feel about most people? Well, Troy, I'm glad you asked. Uh, for I hate almost everyone. <laughs> I love this guy. I love this, this guy. guy. It's a real God. piece of work. This is not the character I expected you to play. No, no. me neither. <laughs> Just this bald nose ring. <laughs> In gang colors. color wearing intellectual that prizes money above all else and hates everyone. I Maybe love this is all a front though, because like you're really a cowardly nerd, net runner, but you're like, if I just nose ring it up and hate everyone because they stuff me in a locker when I was a kid. You know what's so funny? I didn't even think of that part yet that he's like a nose ring wearing net runner. It's just like so like counter to what you assume. Yeah. Who else? Motivations? Um vengeance. Ooh. vengeance Ooh, and then my the feelings best. about people every person is a valuable individual which I feel like you could take different ways like oh they're valuable they, they're worth a life or they're valuable like that I sounds can use like them. corp talk yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Look, at that spin. Spin. look at the corp spin <laughs> yeah. every person is a valuable inter- you gotta, individual you gotta become the executive <laughs> <laughs> Militech where everyone is valuable life <laughs> 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 is valuable <laughs> Francis what about you buddy uh, my uh, the what I value most is honor and I stay awesome. neutral uh, this is a likable uh, character. Okay. We don't know him yet, but he's likable. Yeah, I don't know who this guy is yet, but I, I kind of want to see. He's he seems to be pretty standoffish. You know, he's shy. Well, he is French. Shy. And he's French. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's the only it's, that's the only mark it's against be, you. Yeah, <laughs> stays, he stays <laughs> neutral. I'm a French North American, though. That's, that's true. That's, Big difference. It's true. It's a big um, melting pot. But uh, but no, I I think this this guy's going to be interesting. I like it. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's an interesting per- No one is good in this world, you know what I mean? Or this <laughs> yeah, very, exactly. What you think is good is is very different. Uh, people have to kill each other to survive. Yeah. Uh, Skip, what about you? Uh, it's kind of a toss-up f- for him between family and friendship and how he feels about most people. People are wonderful. <laughs> that sounded sarcastic, at least the way you said it. So <laughs> no, no. People are wonderful. Yeah. 
I don't think that's the way it was intended. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. Uh, now, what is the thi- what are the things you value most? Most valued person in your life? Most valued possession you own? That person is going to be key because they'll be dead by the end of this scenario. <laughs> uh, or at least one of them. All right. Let's see. Most valued person in your life <laughs> for a friend. A friend. All right. So you got to think about who is that friend? Name them. You don't have to tell me now. Actually, no. Name that friend right now. Friend. (laughs) Friend. (laughs) Brendan. Uh, Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Brendan. That's that's what most. That's a good cyberpunk name. Brendan. (laughs) (laughs) Brendan the fish. Uh, Kate, uh, what's your most valuable uh, person? My uh, most valuable person is my sister. Oh, what's her name? May. 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 M A M A E or M A Y or M A I? M A E. Or M A Y E. No. Could have been. Not May. <laughs> May. And what's the name of the island Francis lives on? M A Y. All right, I like that. Sister. Uh, Skid, what's uh, your character's most valuable person? Also, sister. Oh, oh. name? Uh, Beverly. Beverly. Oh, Beverly. Uh, Francis? I got uh, a public figure was my most valued person in my life. A hmm. public figure. Public figure. Um, it could be a rocker boy, a famous like uh, artist, poet. And, or like and, um, Elon Musk if he's still alive and like be obsessed with him. <laughs> right. The head of the, Elon uh, Musk. Yeah, the 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 disembodied like uh, consciousness of Elon Musk <laughs> wherever yeah. he exists and probably in some satellite. Yeah, okay. Or it could that. be <laughs> if you're in, in a big clan, a big nomad clan, it could be the head of your clan might be famous. It could be that person. Oh, yeah. No, that makes sense. That yeah. makes more sense. Mm-hmm. A public figure in the, in the nomad families. Well, yeah. What do you think uh, uh, her or his name is? Um, Jean Claude. Jean Claude, of course. <laughs> right. Well, he, he helped you French. assimilate uh, yes, when you came he, over. Yeah, he, he taught uh, me French. He taught me so much. So I have uh, <laughs> Beverly me May, so Jean Claude, and friend. Yeah. That's what uh, I have so far. I'm going to make my friend a woman named Zoe. Zoe. Okay. Yep. okay. Zoe. I like Zoe. it. Wait. We're really hey, rounding so these who is people she? up. Who is she? I don't know. Who is this Zoe? About. We'll find out. Maybe a former lover. Uh, what is your most valued possession? Just go around the horn here. <clears throat> and know that I am I actually going to roll for this. Take it from you. Rolling. Rolling. Six. A recording. Oh, that's Weird. interesting. From who? From Zoe, Zoe. Right before she died? <gasps> She's already your best dead. friend being like, you are worthy. People do like you. Right. <laughs> you I know Lisa you hate Simpson. almost everyone. Yeah, what is on that recording? Is the recording... You know what? what makes you, you don't hate know. everybody? You don't know. Or is you that the know. only thing that makes you from killing everyone you say? <laughs> that is cool. Uh, Skid? Uh, a piece of jewelry. So I'm going to say it's my necklace. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, good roll, Kate. A photograph of my family. Ah. Uh, okay. Do you think your whole family is still a part of your life or just your sister May? I'm going to say no. Yeah. Are they gone or they're just like... The world's effed up there. I feel like we're going to, yeah, we're going to roll potentially family crisis. So I think oh, I want to see what right. that is and then figure out that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to engineer itself. Uh, Francis, possession. Uh, a piece of jewelry, which oh, another piece is of jewelry. going to be this, this uh, the diamond stud on the tongue piercing <laughs> is what I'm going to use. Yes. And it's, okay. it's kept safe. At all it's kept safe right on your tongue. Down my tongue. Uh, all right, well, let's go to the next one. What, here what is that piece of jewelry? It's right on the tip of my tongue. What's <laughs> <laughs> it called? Yes. Uh, all right, this is um, your original family background. Roll a D10 or choose one. This is interesting. Like, does Kate's character come from a family of corporate execs? Or does she come from a family of combat zoners? Like, no. this, who you know who you are, or you're figuring out who you are. Where did you come from? That tells so much story uh, as well. What did you guys roll or pick? Well, mine rolled uh, Mega Structure War Warren Rats, Ooh. which Whoa. I think is cool because like the Mega Structures can be ru- like owned by corporations. Uh huh. So like something happened, and I work for the corporation for that Mega Structure now. Well, maybe oh, against see, all odds, you worked your way up, like. 
mm-hmm. fighting tooth and nail to get respect. That's yeah, interesting. Nice. Night City was wiped out from this nuke. And so as it started to rebuild, they just started building these mega structures for people to live. The survivors needed a place to stay. Some of them left. Some of them stayed. So you came from that. And from there, you rose up the corporate ladder. That's, That's cool. interesting. They're kind of uh, like the blocks in Judge Dredd. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a great uh, idea. I mean, the, the setting is so perfect for uh, just creating. You can just see. I can visualize the characters so easily. Uh, what would normally take so many sessions to think of the history of this character, it's all built into the character creation. Um, who's next? Background. I'll go. Uh, rolling. Nine. Rolling. Reclaimers. Ah. You started out on the road, but then moved into one of the deserted ghost towns or cities to rebuild it. A pioneer life. Dangerous, but with plenty of simple food and a safe place to sleep. You were homeschooled if there was anyone who had time. Yeah, the reclaimers are very uh-huh. interesting. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, our good buddy Eric Mona is playing 2077, and he posted a picture of like a bunch of people sitting outside of like a house playing guitar. They're, the reclaimers are like outside of Night City, and they're like, we cannot live in this awful place. We're going to go start a new life by claiming these territories that were completely vacant after the Fourth Corporate War. So you grew up in that, but hmm. then something brought you Back, back into the nice city. city. Whereas your family got the out gang. of there. The gang. UK. The gang, right. The gang. The gang. Or at least the gang colors. I was kidnapped uh, by a gang. Reclaimer. Very cool. <laughs> oh, dude. God. Yeah, we're going to play this for three weeks and not 19. Uh, kid, what do you got? Uh, so my guy grew up in basically a very dangerous working class neighborhood. Ooh, a very dangerous working class neighborhood. Is so that basically combat zone. Combat zone, yeah. yeah. I mean, when I think of the combat zone, I think of like Boston in the 80s. Like you couldn't walk <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. combat zone. Yeah. Times Square in the 80s. Well, it's yeah. so it's funny. Square. That's why <laughs> cyberpunk, like so much of the, the its near future is kind of based on an extrapolation of what the present was like in the 80s, which is like these exploding crime rates and all this stuff. So a lot of the, the a lot of the, what the stuff you'll, you'll see in it is is reminiscent of that mm-hmm. environment what people thought the future would be like at that point so yeah yeah i can remember like, being a kid and like going to the city and people be like don't go like between chinatown and this area here that's the combat zone and i was like i know nothing about it but i'm not gonna go there <laughs> uh so yeah this is where uh skid's character originated and francis what about you so I got nine a reclaimers as well. Uh, Ooh, I started another out on reclaimer. Road. Yeah, so and you're still yeah. on the road. We met. We got yeah, <laughs> we dude. Got maybe a history. we got oh, a history. Maybe our families know each other. And maybe maybe John Claude is Joe's dad. Maybe we're oh, enemies. <laughs> or maybe yeah, maybe we are enemies. I don't know. I don't know. But it, yeah, we we grew up on the road. Then moved into one of the deserted ghost towns. <laughs> well, I do hate built. almost everyone, so maybe we are in <laughs> Yeah. Because he stole your like, tongue ring. Does that change my friends? <laughs> <That's such> <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. So you both were reclaimers. You both came from families that got out of there and claimed their own section of land. And Joe, your character has come back to Night City to join gangs. And uh, Francis, you've continued a, a life on the road with the nomads. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm still nomading. Still out there cool. doing it. Awesome. All right, let's move on. Um, I was on the road once. Tough gig. <laughs> Tough here's, gig. here's what Kate was uh, talking about here. Uh, your family crisis and your environment. So now we know like your background, but what was the exact environment? And then what was their family crisis? I like that it's not like, is there an option like your family didn't have a crisis? No. <laughs> no. Everyone's Every- character, <laughs> their family had a crisis. Everyone <laughs> has to have like chaos in their past. Yeah. Um, yes. For the environment, I'm just going to choose the, in a huge me- mega structure building because that's already my background and it goes together. But for family crisis. Give it the old college role. My family was killed. And I'm the only survivor, but I have a sister, so we survived. Wow. Oh my wow. God. It just got so sad. Yeah. Uh-oh. That's awful. Wow, that's cool. Now it's it's all coming together. I really didn't know this until we started doing it that this is how it would work. The world exploded. 
They started building megastructures. <laughs> you and your sister, the sole survivors, just started living in these megastructures, and then somehow you found your way into the corp. I feel Did like my, my parents died, <laughs> I was young, and my Did sister they? took care of me in the megastructure. Yeah. Your sister took care of you, right. And now she can't take care of me, so I'm taking care of her by being an executive. Send him money. Do you think she resents you? Do you think she (laughs) hates you for your success? <laughs> no. Sleep on it. Sleep on it. <laughs> like the Whatever you say you. when you do this, it's always such a fun. It's uh, Barbara Walters. I love this. I love uh, this. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break before I do mine, just to mention again we are giving away a core rule book. For yeah. this. Thank you to Dude, our Telsorian cool. Games, who is giving, they're giving it away. We're not giving it away. We are uh, facilitating the giveaway. We're the middle uh, So if you are watching, you didn't catch it earlier, or you didn't see a link in chat yet, we are going to drop another link in chat. Um, maybe not right this second, but very soon our community manager is on it. Keep an eye on chat. Um, you click that link, you can be entered to win uh, a core rulebook and a PDF of the uh, game. Uh, I'm, when I, I'm sorry, the PDF is the core rulebook. You can get the hardcover of the core rulebook and a PDF. And then also we're going to give a second winner a PDF. So uh, stick around, watch the chat if you want to enter for that. Uh, that is coming up. And then I am going to do my environment. Here we go. My childhood environment was one. Ran on the street with no adult supervision. Yeah. No wonder you so, hate everybody. You didn't have anybody to found you teach you. Yeah, 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 there yeah. we go, there we go. But it wasn't so much the street as much as like the wild, right? The yeah. the, uh, the wild. The frontier. So he kind of learns to live on the frontier and then he gets swooped up. And then let's look at my family crisis is seven. Your family is involved in a long-term conspiracy organization or association such as a crime family yes. or revolutionary oh. group. Oh. 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 Crime so are you awesome. like a deep cover guy? Oh, I mean, you're oh my like God. some crazy. Oh wow! Wow, no wonder you got back out of out of the reclaimer territory into Night City. You want to get mixed up in that mob life, uh, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> when you look at this bald, uh, uh, <laughs> nose ringed, ring, gang colored <laughs> dude, do you think he is going to? Uh, hack into your net and steal your shit? Probably not, right? He's too stupid. He's too dumb. <laughs> I'm smart. He's part of a, he's part of a global conspiracy to take down your country. He's just, yeah. he's just part of a global conspiracy. Uh, Unbeknownst. Skid, what do you got? So I'll get into the details later, but his he has two brothers, both dead, and father dead, and a mother and a sister who are both still back home. And they are basically indentured contract servants to the Giraffa Corporation, just basically a, a mega construction corp. They're kind of stuck back home. Awesome. Uh, so that that is that your family crisis that you your family was killed, or some yeah, part of your my, family was killed. My, basically, my brothers were killed over here in Night City. Yeah. Is that mm. what brought you to Night City? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Troy, you are having a good time. Oh, I'm blast. <laughs> He's here for the tongue ring. Francis, what you roll? Uh, so, for, for childhood environment, I grew up in a decaying, once upscale neighborhood, now holding off the boosters to survive. And uh, then, a four, get out of here. You went to yeah. the reclaimer. They were like, we can't live like this. We can't raise yeah. a child here. So, they went to the reclaimer territory. Right. So, before, and then for the background, uh, I got a three. I got. My family was exiled or otherwise driven from their original home nation. My God, it's perfect. It was, yeah, it was like you rolled it, the perfect thing. Yeah, it really did. Like it came out perfectly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Jean Claude was uh, <laughs> was who I was looking up to, and then someone exiled Jean Claude and exiled yeah. us, and, and then your we had followed, to just, yeah. yeah, we just had to keep moving. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to, I keep saying this, but arguably the most important one uh, for a long-term campaign, your friends and your enemies on page 51. Uh, this is really interesting. Some of you might have none. You roll a D10 and subtract seven and the minimum is zero for both friends and enemies. So if you roll a, a seven, uh, you have to basically roll an eight, nine or a 10 to have friends. Uh, and same thing with enemies. <laughs> it's so dark. 
<laughs> you don't roll any, have a thirty percent chance to make any friends. Joe, yeah, I bet you Joe rolls a uh, ten for friends, or no, a, a, a one for friends and a ten for enemies. <laughs> um, all right, so tell me, did did anybody score either? No friends, but no enemies. So. Oh, okay. Might be might be good. Blank Joe, slate. Uh, you're off mic. I know, I know. I rolled a natural one for friends. So I have <laughs> negative six friends. <laughs> negative six friends. <laughs> that should just be six enemies. What about enemies? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading this. So, so you do it again. Oh, oh, okay. I see, I see. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, and a three. So no enemies? All right, no friends, no enemies. I think that's common. Um, well, so yeah, clearly by the math it is. Enemies get complicated because you then have to roll like, why are they enemies? Uh, Skid, any friends? Any enemies? Uh, I rolled a, I also rolled a one for friends, so no friends. But for enemies, I rolled a ten. Oh, so so. three enemies. This three enemies. nice boy has three enemies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like the nice guys that killed his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I love his shirts. <laughs> yeah, they're just jealous. <laughs> uh, so the first one is a nine. So that's a government official. Wow. Uh, number four, childhood enemy. And the last one is an estranged relative. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. A government official. Man, we could just do a movie about your character with this backstory. And then you can, yeah. then you can go further, Skid, and you don't have to do it live. It's like, what caused it? Who's been wronged? Yeah. And what can they throw at you? Uh, before next week, though, I'd love to see the sheet to see what, what, why? Who, why are these people after you? Because they will inevitably find their way into this adventure. Uh, Francis, any friends, any enemies? I got zero friends. I rolled a one. I got Nobody zero friends. friends. Got six enemies, though. <laughs> so you rolled six a six enemies. on enemies? Yeah. So you have zero enemies. enemies cause it's, uh, you subtract oh no, that's zero. Yeah. Oh, oh, so it's a zero. Oh, yeah. oh so zero enemies. I, th I thought it was six. Oh, my fault. Yeah. Um, Skid's got <laughs> yeah, enough enemies like, to go around for all of you. But the one means zero friends, right? If you roll the uh, one, yeah, zero yeah, friends. For friends, yeah. Got to yeah, roll an eight, nine, or ten to score. Just any. to have any friend. Okay, thank God some of you guys Friendless. rolled some. All right, let's move on to the next page. Uh, we're, we're rounding out the end here of the life path, and then it's just a matter of numbers, which is pretty easy. Um, sweet revenge. What uh, are you? Slash, what are they going to do about it? So that's just if you have enemies, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah. Skid, this is just oh. you. And you know what? You can always, they can all have the same issue if you want. Uh, I'll roll separately for each. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the government official, that's a five. So, backstab indirectly. All right. So, that's what the, that would, that's what the government would do. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're small yeah. potatoes to them. Totally. Uh, <laughs> the childhood enemy is a two. So, avoid the scum. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And the estranged relative is a four, so that's go into a murderous rage and try to physically rip their face off. Oh, we gotta find this man. Who is this relative? We need to know. Amazing. <laughs> what is this relative's name? I mean, this is huge. This is the person that's right on your tail. Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan. <laughs> Uncle Dan. Do you have any idea what happened between you and Uncle Dan? I got I, I have an idea, I but I, yeah. I'll. I gotta think about it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, it's it's really it's, about it. I, I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody roll okay. a D10 and let me know if you roll an 8, 9, or a 10 to see if you have any tragic love affairs. Ooh, I got an 8. Okay. Francis has one uh, tragic love affair. Uh, Anybody else with an 8, 9, or 10? I have two. <laughs> Oh, 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 Zigzag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gets, it gets crowded in those warrens. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and the mega structure. Uh, <laughs> Skid, any love affairs? No love affairs. Joe? None for me either. All right, Kate, Roll let's uh, let's unpack this baggage here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Roll okay. then two times to see what happened to them. So one is um, a personal goal. Uh, came between us, so I'm gonna make that like I work for an evil evil corporation, and they didn't want me to. Ah, okay. And mm. so you broke up. Interesting. And his name is Alejandro. Alejandro. <laughs> like Alejandro? No, please don't leave no, me. No, Alejandro. Um, Alejandro, no. And then my next lover went cyber psycho, so <gasps> I think she was a net runner, and her name was like pseudo 
like Suda as her like her name, but her real name was Savannah. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, cool. <laughs> Pseudo. Pseudo. Hey, Savannah. That's great. So cyberpsychosis, we will get into a little bit uh, later, but it's no joke. And everyone is on the verge of it. The minute you implant cyberware into you, I mean, there's some cyberware that doesn't have any effect on that. But if you get too cybered up, you're gone. You've lost your human, uh, your human side and you become only machine. So that's what happened to poor Savannah. No wonder that relationship didn't work out. And we round out life paths with your life goals. <laughs> Obviously, if this is a long-term campaign, which who knows, very well could be, your life goal is going to be very important. This is what drives your character to uh, survive, to go on scores, to kill. Hmm. What'd you guys get? Rolling. 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 Uh, for... Cause pain and suffering to anyone who crosses you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I'm seeing this guy, and you can tell me I'm wrong, as someone that was picked on. This sounds like his behavior, <laughs> hating everybody, wanting to hurt everybody. It just sounds like a dude that was picked on. Mm. Nerd. Mm. I don't know. Maybe because I, want, I uh, was that guy. <laughs> yeah, I was that I'm projecting. Uh, Kate, what about you? I want um, to gain power and control. Oh wow! wow. That oh, fits. Shocker. Very yeah. exact. <laughs> Go Typical. <figure>. <laughs> That's why things didn't work out with you and Alejandra. Uh, Alejandra. <laughs> Sigh. Alejandra. <laughs> Skid. So I want to save, if possible, anyone else involved in my background, like a lover, family member. So I want to rescue eventually my mother and my sister, bring them out from the situation they're in, free them from this indentured contract with the corporation, bring them to nice night city to somewhere safe, as safe as I, I can it. make it. I love it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, imagine how horrible it must be where they are that you want to bring them to night city. Yeah. To be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. You'll be safe here. <laughs> Watch out for falling it. bullets. Uh, <laughs> Get an Francis. implant, you'll love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I got uh, uh, gain, fame, and recognition. Uh, I'm trying to bring back my family after exile. I'm trying to restore my family's honor. I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, make sure Jean-Claude will never be forgotten. <laughs> and and all forget. the French he taught me. Jean-Claude, I like God it. Bless. Yes. Great. All right. So we have rounded out the basics of these characters, but each individual role has its own life path. And this is just as important because this is going to define how you, your character links up to the role that they play in society, because you are your role. You are a net runner. You are a nomad. You are an exec and a tech. So let's find out what exactly they are. Why don't we start uh, with Netrunner. Grant, that's going to be on page uh, 56. Joe, let's figure out what kind of runner are you? And again, you can roll or you can pick here. Are you a, a freelancer, a little hack for hire, or you just like to crack systems for the fun of it? It's been so wild rolling. I'm just going to keep rolling. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Let's see if it, if it can fit at all. Three. Uh, You're a hacktivist interested in cracking systems and exposing bad guys. Like our executive. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Hack, hack to this. This guy hack thinks he's one of the good ones. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they always do. Uh, now you get to just straight up choose. Do you have a partner or do you work alone? Uh, I work alone, obviously. Okay. What's your workspace <laughs> like? Roll a D6. Oh, we're moving fast. Uh, oh, right, because it's role specific. So. Oh, yeah. So I know uh, you're right, writing What's these your in. workspace like? Here we go. That is a four. Corporate, modular, and utilitarian. Oh. See, we're more alike than you think we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we can connect. I think you're right. As different as we are, we're uh, similar. And then we move on to who are some of your other clients? Yeah. Am I right? This is important, sure. Who are some of your other clients? Another four. Local solos or other combat types who use you to keep their personal systems secure. Okay. I like that. Uh, do you guys ever watch... Uh, what was that Remy Malik show on USA? Oh, Mr. Oh, Robot. Mr. Robot. Yes. Mr. Robot. Yeah. yeah it wasn't like season two he got hired, but well, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, but like, yeah. It kind of has that feel like you're being hired. Keep keep this keep this secure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I almost uh, stumbled into a huge spoiler and there. But, and your borderline personality. 
disorder too. <laughs> yeah. uh, where do I get my programs? I get my programs from five. You have back doors into a few corporate warehouses. Oh, I wonder oh. who uh, hooked you I up with who those back doors. Oh, I don't know. Why don't I talk to my team member? <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, exactly this is awesome. why Alejandra left. Oh. You know. <laughs> Come back door on your enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gunning for you, Joe? Uh, let's see. Who is gunning for me? That is a, another four uh, lawmen who consider you illegal black hat and want to bust you. A- an illegal black hat and want to bust you. The lawman. Uh, what's a law great man. Uh, Grant? Give me a. This is right up Grant's alley. Grant, what's a black hat? You're asking me instead of the person who codes for a living what a black hat is? I have no clue what that is. A black hat is a a hacker that goes from being someone who hacks into a system and then gets recruited by the government in order to, like, uh, activate their systems and protect them, I believe. I think think that's a white white hat. hat. That's a white hat. White hat. A a black hat is the opposite. They're doing it for money. They're doing it for whatever whatever dark reasons they I wouldn't yeah. know what either of those things are. I get a uh, b- 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 black hat hackers are criminals who break into computer networks with malicious intent they may also yeah. release mal- okay so they get turned into white hats potentially if they're good enough okay. to get caught working like there there are a lot of hackers that started kind of like freaking phones in the 80s like you know playing mm-hmm. that tape to make free uh, calls at phone places oh. and then they learned how to hack into like IBM and when they got caught they'd be like you can go to jail and stay a black hat forever, or you can work for us. Wait, you can work for us. Yeah. yeah. It's like Jimmy Simpson and Mr. Robot. Yep. Yeah. Joe, you should just really watch Mr. Robot. This is uh, I, totally I a, did. I did. A great character study. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, man, so you, uh, you're black hat, and they're all on your ass. You got to keep a low profile. I'm sure that yep. bald head, nose ring, and gang colors is a great start. Uh, let's move on to the tech here. Uh, Skid, uh, what kind of tech are you? So I think he's a jack of all trades. His okay. workspace is, it's a, a filing system that only he understands, but it looks like a complete mess. <laughs> <laughs> Works alone. I imagine this is what your apartment looks like. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and then main clients, uh, oh, it's a D6. Uh, I work for myself and sell what I invent repair. Okay, that's okay. fine. And so you don't have a partner, right? I do not have a partner. Yeah, work for yourself. And I hit the night markets and score deals whenever I can for my supplies. Yeah, I can totally see you like just waiting around trying to get a lead on when the next night market's going to pop up, <laughs> showing up there and spending all your creds. Yeah. And uh, I have a rival tech after me trying to beat me for resources and parts. And he goes by the code name. <laughs> Uncle Dan. <laughs> <laughs> this is a street name. <laughs> street name handle. Uncle Dan. Uh, that's a that's a rivals the uh, the new house rives of uh, Night City is the possible name for this episode. <laughs> Code name Uncle Dan. Uh, awesome. Okay, great. Uh, I'm actually kind of bummed that we've gotten this far. And just didn't have all four characters be real housewives of Night City. <laughs> <laughs> that were, I know, I know, but that were, oh man. The good God, side, so good. Good side opportunity. That's what we were all doing here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to exact and find out what kind of corp do you work for? I mean, this is huge here. We already know that you're letting Joe's Netrunner get backdoor access. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So, yeah, personal electronics and robots. Robotics. Uh, oh, my God. It is Mr. Robot. It you're is. Mr. Robot. And then the division I am in, three, research and development. Okay, a little R and D, which I think oh, makes sense with like my yeah. urban flash, where it's like I really like the tech stuff, so I research yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah, you're well, cutting, think about it. You, you grew up, you grew up in these mega structures. Maybe a lot of survival was like just taking disparate parts and finding a way to put them together to survive. So maybe you just had a natural knack for that, or maybe your sister did and she taught you. Aww. Aww. Uh, oh, did I skip something here? No. Uh, what's what's next? Good How or good bad? bad? Or- Mm. I got totally evil. We'll engage in illegal, unethical business all the time. Wow. You uh, <laughs> you crapped time. out on that one. So that's interesting. Now now we're gonna have to decide at some point, like, are you are your are your values aligned with the corporation? Or is that why you're working with these people that like mm. you're just you're gonna try to take down the corporation from the inside out, or you're like, that's a paycheck and what I do with my friends on the side is a paycheck. Very mm-hmm. interesting. Or are you just an evil piece of 
garbage. Who knows? <laughs> uh, the corporation is based in several cities. Okay, all right. Who's, so you're the night night city division. Who's gunning for us? Different divisions within the company are feuding with each other. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, interesting. And then my current state with my boss. It's important. Oh, it could affect your relationship huge. with this your uh, escort. Ooh, my boss gives me a free hand and doesn't want to know what I'm up to. Awesome. awesome. That's why I'm with you guys. That's, kind of awesome. <laughs> That's great. It's like you work, uh, you do some scores on the side as long as you show up at 9 a.m. on Just Tuesday. Get huh? your work done. <laughs> yep. Very Meet cool. Meet your All KPIs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to 68 here, uh, finishing up uh, the final life path with Nomad. And I'll tell you right, after yeah. this, it, we're, we're speed running to the end of character creation because this yeah. is the, the meat and potatoes. Uh, how big is your pack? All right, let's check this out. Right here. Oh, almost fell off. Hold on. Oh, that's a three. 40, 40 or 50 members. 50 members, yeah. Wow, wow. okay. We, we roll right. deep. We roll deep. And John Claude uh, is the head of the snake. If on yeah. land... What do they do? Well, you gotta, this is yeah. important. Are they based on land, air, or sea? You can decide. Yeah. No, that's a water world. Oh man, I am, oh, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I'm gonna go land. I'm just gonna go land because I don't know how much water we're gonna be around. <laughs> well, you do get access to a jet ski at level four. I know. <laughs> Jet ski, I'm do telling it, you, the it, jet ski. Then once you get to land, you're just going to do a jet ski on the land. Jump on the piece of ass and take a jet ski down the land. Have, have, have Skid's character work on it. He can yeah, tweak it for I'll, land. I'll, I'll he can totally modify it. Get my jet ski working on land, man. Just throw no, some upgrades on there. I'm just picturing this guy rolling down the street. Make me a hover jet ski. You're like the street sludge, though, in the gutter. Like, that's what you're in. Oh, yeah. Spewing it out on the passersby. The blood rain once you get to know. Night City, you can skim right I, through that. Uh, all right, that so you want to go land. land. If I'm on land, land, then what do they do? Roll a d10. Uh, so I got five migrant farmers. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, so you know, we'll grow some. We'll grow some stuff. It'll be be part of uh, what I guess I, I caravan from town to town. Yeah, maybe, maybe they delivering. grow some illegal stuff. That you bring into Maybe. Night City. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe that's what you got um, you kicked out in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and what do you do for your pack? Yeah. Oh, what do I do? I just roll a one. You're a scout. Negotiate. Scout. Oh wow. That's interesting. I, that I didn't see that in this character yet. So what does that mean? I didn't mean? either. I don't scout and negotiator. Um maybe I'm negotiating deals with the uh, other families that I'm either transporting for or or trans transporting to cities, and I'm negotiating with the, with the folks who are buying my wares that I'm bringing from city to city or from uh, free states to the city. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's yeah. That's what you do. What, well, what is your pack's overall philosophy? It's gonna be another uh, D six philosophy. Let's check this out. Well, we got another one. We know uh, they're migrant oh, farmers, but what if, what do they believe in? Oh, uh, we uh, we are always working for good. You are uh, your pack accepts others. Just wants to get along. Hey, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, this seems yeah. like the face of the group. At least, or like, I mean, that's, I'm not using the right term, but like, <laughs> yeah. this is this is the nice guy. I feel let me, like let he, me do the know. talking, guys. Before we get start shooting, let's let's see if we can work this yeah. out. All right. <laughs> Seems like a nice group need... of migrant farmers out for the good guy, but there's always something gun, someone gunning for you. Who's gunning for your pack? Oh gosh, yeah, this is where it gets. I real. bet you roll a three. Come on, three. Oh no! I got two booster gangs. <sighs> booster gang, oh, oh, that's booster awesome! Gang. Yeah, they're the booster everywhere, gangs man. Are they want my produce. They want all that migrant <laughs> farm produce that I'm, they can't have it. They yeah, can't. they're all over Night just, City. So if you're if like, you're the scout, that's like true though. Like fresh food is not right? things that people eat. So right? that's like gold. That's like gold. Yeah, yeah Francis, Skip, and Joe, your characters are eating kibble, steady diets of kibble for the most yeah, part, unless you right. invest it in something else. Uh, and it's not kibble like dog food, but it might as well be. Uh, but <laughs> the execs get a nice little package. They don't yeah. eat that garbage. I also go to see a show once a month. <laughs> Living the dream. Yeah, the dream. Yeah, this misses the most. <laughs> Got Hamilton tickets. Cabo de Casa over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're, I said we're doing the edge runner uh, method of character creation, and with the edge runner method of character creation, you roll for stats on a table based on 
your role. So, Grant, do you have that little table I made up that has the four roles and the stats on it? I do indeed. All right. So, you see here, you're just going to roll straight across. It kind of has that original first edition uh, Dungeon and Dragons feel where you just roll, oh, I rolled a three, that's my strength. Um, but it's it's pretty forgiving. The ones that you get hosed in are not categories uh, that can hurt you. Like if you notice, not all of them have a four as an option. So if a four is an option, it's in a stat that really isn't super relevant for your class. So just in your own time right now, kind of uh, roll across the board. Just roll a d10 and what you get is your uh, each of your stats and the stats are uh, intelligence reflexes dexterity tech cool will luck move body and uh, amp which I believe is empathy empathy uh, yeah and that has to do with like you lose empathy the more cyberware uh, you get when you lose humanity it, it factors into like how many humanity points you have sorry what page is that on again that that table Oh, that's right. Uh, the graph uh, for a net runner. It's each. Yeah, they're all divided up into different. What page tables. are you on? Do you, do you know? I, Why I don't you just tell me the name of the show you want to see? It's uh, 74, 75 around there. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. lost it. Okay. All right. Got it. Here we go. Yeah, I think that's the street oh. rat. Um, oh, I'm crushing this. There you go, skid. You're always going to get a happy skid if he rolls good stats. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so the difference is you just roll a d10 for each stat. Um, so yeah, intelligence, reflex, dex, tech, cool. Anybody get, anybody get some crushes, some eights? I already I got, got the lowest eights. possible <laughs> intelligence I could roll for my intelligent, intellectual, and aloof character. <laughs> I got an eight for cool. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Oh, oh, really excited. Important. It got the highest reflex I could roll. It's pretty that's good. Sweet. That's, that's uh, important for initiative. Got a Midland Dex. Uh, oh, a I got six. A Anybody get real low empathy, like a four or lower empathy? <laughs> yes, I got a four. Oh, I got a no. Four empathy. Oh, it's really bad. Bad. I got no empathy. Oh, that's bad, especially once you start oh. cybering up. Yeah, I can't. I, I won't be able to take much uh, much cyber, cyber yeah. upgrades, will I? No. We always oh. thought you were the nice guy of the group. It's because you have no soul. <laughs> I'm dead inside. That's why. Right. I'm dead inside. Wow. Um, but but those stats I can build on, right? Throughout the game. Yeah, as right? you uh, as you level up, you get... Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you get points that you can use to boost your stats. You can also get cyberware or uh, gear uh, that you can uh, boost your stats on. Uh, uh, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's something you can inject in your brain that makes you more intelligent. Uh, uh, it's drugs. 2045. Drugs, yeah. yes. Mostly drugs. <laughs> yeah, mostly it's drugs. called yeah. cocaine. <laughs> 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 I that makes me feel really an sexy. <laughs> I got an eight intelligence and an eight tech. Holy Damn. crap. Oh, you're totally making the jet ski hoverboard. <laughs> I'll make all the jet skis you want. <laughs> but I got a four in cool and a four in will. <laughs> he's not cool at all. He's not cool. Which totally no, fits my cool. concept. That's okay. So this, this works. Uh, I got a bunch of Midland rolls, but I did get three maxes. I got the highest I could get in cool. I got an eight. Nice. Ooh. Move cool. and body, uh, both sevens. I don't have. Nice. I only have one eight. That's cool. And then I got a four will. Oof. Eesh. And then the other low one was intelligence. Everything else is in the middle. Oh, I have two eights. Ooh, what'd Intelli- you get? Again? Intelligence and cool. And cool. Nice. Oh my god. That makes so much that makes sense. sense. Exactly yeah, cool. That really fits. She's the smart exact, right? and she's cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what about you, Francis? Any eights? I did. I got an eight dexterity and an eight cool. We're so, so cool. We're right, so cool. Cool. You guys are too so cool. cool. Group. <laughs> Why like, are you even in our group? Because he's like a groupie who like makes us feel really cool. You know, he's like, you guys are so cool. I totally. I'm like the nerd that gets to hang out with the cool kids because yeah. he compliments them all the time. Yeah, and you make cool things for them. And you yeah. make awesome yeah. things. Yeah, like my jet ski hover hover machine. <laughs> it's really right. pushing that. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta really, make that. How am I supposed to put? A, how am I supposed to put together this ripped cool net runner? <laughs> 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 net runner. 
Uh, all right, all right. It's all coming together. <laughs> cool, dumb. As Troy, as Troy says, <laughs> it's, it's all, yeah, real dumb <laughs> intellectual. Intellectual. Well, that's the thing. He's like a false intellectual. Yeah. yeah, he's an intellectual like Kevin Klein's character in Fish Called Wanda. <laughs> like he knows I'll all these that. philosophers oh, quotes, but he doesn't understand them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that great philosopher said. Why? <laughs> Just a <laughs> real Aristotle exactly. was down. not Belgian. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see this guy. He's really unlikable as opposed to Francis's character. Uh, now we do derived uh, statistics, which is based on you know you're going to find out what your hit points are and what your humanity. And this is this is a table right here. Uh, so, Kate, what's your will and what's your body? My will is seven. My body is five. Uh, all right, so you have forty hit points. Joe, what's your will and what's your body? Uh, seven body and four will. Seven body and four will. You also have 40 hit points. Skid, will and body? Uh, I have a four will and a six body. Four will and a six body. Only 35 hit points for this uncool Ooh. nerd. Uh, what oh. about you, Francis? Will and body? I got a, I got a seven will and a six body. 45, so 45 hit points. Ooh. 45. He's I got lucky. dude. Can, can you, I'm sorry, what's the formula? Um, it is uh, 10 plus 5 times your body and will averaged rounded up. Uh, but there's a table that just does it all for you. Yeah. Uh, now, your seriously wounded threshold is half of your total HP rounded up. And your death save, which is on your character sheet, is equal to your body. Anybody got a real low body? Five. You better stand behind old Francis' character. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm gonna have an I'm gonna have an escort. So oh that's yeah, that's, that's why you get a bodyguard. You. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you'd be my bodyguard, sorry. Right, what is one more time? What is it? You don't trust my table? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just asking the body. What was the oh your body? Points? Your death save is your body statistic. You are the way the hit points are calculated. It's ten plus five times your body plus will averaged. Oh, I'm sorry. I put that in humanity. I put that in the wrong thing. So we we haven't done humanity yet. Uh, No, humanity is now. What's your uh, empathy score, Joe? Uh, Six. All right, so you have a 60 humanity. That will go down the second you start adding cyberware. Mm -hmm. Uh, Skid, what's your imp? Uh, Also six. Also six, so 60. It's 10 times your imp. Uh, Kate, what'd you get for empathy? Seven. Seven, so you get 70. Oh, uh, wow. It'll take you a little longer to lose yourself. And uh, Francis, you got a four, right? Yeah. Yes, you, have <laughs> you gotta be careful. You have a 40 I'm humanity. Cy- uh, I'm going cyber psycho, y'all. Cyber yeah. psycho. I can feel it. I can feel it. Psycho killer. All right, those are your <laughs> derived stats. And once again, just remember your seriously wounded threshold is equal to half your HP rounded up. Your death save is your body statistic. I hope by the end of this series, those will all come into play. <laughs> Uh, all right, now we're going to set skills. And really, this is any, anything we have to talk too much about. Uh, the edge runner way of doing it is like each roll has a set of statistics that you need to put points into. You get 86 points that you can spread around those statistics. They recommend that you just put fours in everything. Then you have six extra skill points that you can kind of mix around any way you want. You can also make a four or three and then make a four or five. You can kind of take away and add. No skill can be lower than two or higher than six. And then you also get four free skill points for the language that you chose, chose, which was English, English, French, and Thai. Um, So you guys can just do that on uh, on your own right now as we continue through this. Um, Everyone has statistics that you have to take. Um, They're sort of your basic stats, and then your class gives you ones that they recommend. If we were doing the complete package, you would just have 86 skill points. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, Kate, you have a question? Yes. There are three columns. Three columns? Yeah. So there's level, stat, and base. Where are we putting those numbers? So Uh, you invest those points into the level column. Okay, cool. And then base is the total, I think, of your level of their level and stat. Okay. Right. So each skill uh, is uh, aligned with a stat. Uh, so, like, you know, I think uh, uh, heavy weapons or something. I don't even know if that's a skill. Is linked to reflex. So you would write what your points are in heavy weapon. Then you would put your reflex score and your base would be what you actually uh, add to the D10 when that skill comes up. Mm. Makes sense. So yes. like uh, athletics like, is okay. dexterity base. So if you have four points in athletics and a six for dex, your base is 10. 
that's what you add to a D10 roll when an athletics check comes up. Uh, okay. It's pretty sweet. I mean, it's very uh, Pathfinder-esque. Um, it is. I don't, it I, is. I, I, I'm shocked uh, at how close it is, but it's very cool uh, to if, you've, if you're yeah, coming but, from Pathfinder uh, to jump right into this. But there are a ton of skills. Yeah. And some yeah. skills cost too. Yeah. Like you can get into like, this is what's really cool. If you want to be like a martial artist, you it's t- twice the amount of skill points for martial arts. Then you choose which style of martial artist you want to be. Mm-hmm. You want to be an Aikido master, a karate master, judo. Uh, and then you can be, you know, the more skill points you have, you can be skilled in all these things. Then you get special abilities you can do based on the martial art you choose. You say you want to be a demolitions expert. Those cost double uh, skill points. Yeah, like I'm, I'm in a position where I'm probably going to put extra points in uh, electronics and security tech, mm. right? And yeah. that's double points. And so, like, that's going to make me you know, less stealthy and less able to have a conversation. And like, <laughs> it's, it's really cool how it impacts everything else for you to yeah. be good at these other things. Yeah, if you want to pilot an air vehicle, like Francis, if you had chosen gyrocopter, uh, you know, if you had lived on uh, sea, uh, you could have chosen gyrocopter and fly in. Uh, if you want to put points in a pilot air vehicle, it costs double for each one. Right. But it's probably something you're going to want to invest in, if not now, later, because you have access to these vehicles. Totally, and you never totally. know when you're going to need to use the old gyrocopter. Yeah, we've got to call it in. <laughs> we've got to call in the gyrocopter. <laughs> John Claude, I need it. <laughs> yeah, I also Claude. just want to say, unlike Pathfinder, uh, personal grooming is a skill. It is. <laughs> it is. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Does that link to cool? <laughs> yeah. It you is. have to get a photo of cool on that one. The skill of knowing proper grooming to maximize attractiveness. <laughs> we said this earlier. Two like, lovers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's two ex lovers. Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. So just, you know, allocate those as, as we're going along here. And I'm just going to keep keep cooking. Um, after oh, skills, God. it's weapons, armor, outfit, gear, and cyberware. Now, uh, I spoke to you guys before we did this. Like, there are standards for each character that are given to you. Uh, I recommend it, at least with the Edge Runner way of doing uh, character creation. Just take those standards. And some of those have a choice. Like, do you want a pistol or a this? Uh, so you have choice within each of those things. And then on top of that, you get 500 uh, Euro Bucks. Euro Bucks is the currency they use, EBs, uh, to spend on whatever you want. So, Eddies, also known as Eddies. Eddies? Oh, I didn't know that. I like Eddies. Eddies. Uh, that job's gonna be five hundred eighties. So give me give me sort of the basics of of what you got. Uh, anything that really jumps out, and then uh, what I'm more interested in is what did you spend those five hundred uh, eddies on? Did you just get like uh, a, a really fancy suit, or did you buy ocular impl- implants? Kate, I know you've been thinking about this for a long time. I was so excited time. to just tell you. So Kate. One thing that Kate. Thing first. <laughs> Kate sent us multiple emails about her 500 eddies. <laughs> um, so one thing I did change out, the boring part, the very heavy pistol to me didn't make, make sense. I think she should be yeah. able to ha- conceal her weapon. So I traded out, that out for a heavy pistol. I gave nice. her scratchers as one of her augments. Nice. So basically, nice. I think I put it on her left hand. She has concealable, like, I'm gonna have them under like fake press on nails. <laughs> um, but she, like if she gets grabbed or something, she'd be like, ah, it's, it's like a melee weapon. Oh, I like that. Nice. That um, looked fierce. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, she gets she gets a cyber audio suite. She's got claws. A she's got claws, claws on one hand. <laughs> <laughs> what cyber gets, audio suite? What is she that? Gets a, uh, so it's in order to get like oh, audio so implants bad. or like things on your arms, you usually have to get like the setup for it first in order for your body to accept it. Not always, but for the for audio and visual, you have to get the suites. So mine came with a cyber audio suite. I have an internal agent a bug detector, and a voice stress analyzer. Oh, cool. And um, tech hair was free. So I thought with that, They're she could, like, when she's on the street, um, she'd have her street hair. And when she's in the office, she can, like, tone it down a bit very easily because it's tech hair. This is and amazing. That's awesome. And toxin yeah, you, biters. Yeah, you literally just turn it on and it, like, glows a different color, your hair. Yeah. So cool. Tech and tech hair is free. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it's free. And the tech hair, no humanity lost. 
Oh, see, that's nice. Uh, what about that other audio suite? Did that that must have included some humanity loss? Yeah, the default of what I got was negative twelve, and then I added the scratchers and maybe one other thing, so it's negative sixteen. Ooh, but you started with sixty, right? So you're 70. down to seventy. Oh yeah, you had a high one. Okay, so mm-hmm. you're you're going to be fine for now to get caught up in the rat race. Uh, ju- right, let's go to Skid. Skid, I know you've spent some time with this as well. Uh, any uh, any uh, interesting changes you made to the base? Uh, I'm more interested, obviously, in what you spent the money on. Uh, I just I got a cyber arm. A cyber arm? <laughs> left yeah. or right? Whoa! Uh, right. He's left-handed. His left hand is his tool hand. That's one of the things that comes with the package. So it has some basic, like, drill screwdrivers and stuff, like, like a so awesome. rotating knuckles and everything. And then his other, his right arm is a metal arm. And I want to get synth skin over it, but I can't afford it yet. So, well, hey, maybe you're one score away from getting that synth skin. Yeah. Uh, humanity loss, did it hurt you to get this extra stuff? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's, yeah. a, it's a couple points, but I can't remember. Yeah, the cyber arm's definitely going to cost you, but you didn't do yeah. a, a whole lot of extra add-ons. No, no. Uh, Francis, what uh, did you may spend that uh, cash? Or did you save it? I saved it. I just I just got the tech hair because I thought that would be cool facial hair. <laughs> the mustache, the French mustache, yeah, a glowing like, beard. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh, that's that would be, be cool. Awesome. You have um, to get paint for your face next week. And I was gonna, yeah, I was seriously. Uh, I, that's wow. actually on my plan. <laughs> uh, but I was also gonna get the light tat, but uh, I think that was gonna be too much uh, to take off my empathy. I don't know. I think that was the reason I had to. Can you afford it? it? I don't think I can afford it. I think I might go into psych- cyber psychosis if I go. Well, <laughs> go what's the deep. what's the humanity cost? Uh, actually, that's what I got. I was trying to find it here. Because if it's I, close I, enough, maybe you just live on the edge. Yeah, I just live on the edge <laughs> you're, of you're, psycho. Your empathy oh, goes down snake. each 10. So if you're already down two, you might as well go down the whole 10. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, screw it. I'll do the light tats. <laughs> I'll do the light tats. I'll do the light tats. But I'm nice. a little bit of, I might get a little unhinged. I'm just going to warn you right ahead. And what does this do uh, in terms of what does it give you? Uh, the, well, the light tats, I, I, I think it's just it's cool. <laughs> I think it would be cool to see um, and, and use it out in just normal, like, going about my business. You know, I just might flare up my light tat and something, something piss me off. You know, and in a dark it space, it might uh, illuminate as well, but mainly you just spent that money on something that's making you closer to a robot. Exactly. <laughs> Do you have low intelligence, your character? Um, he was... No, he has... A four education that would be under education, right? Or no, uh, sorry, no, it's a the stats on the first page of your character sheets on the left hand side. Intelligence is the first one on the column. Oh, shoot, sorry, it. it's on another one. I, I have these written down, I don't have it all in my sheet. I didn't get it. Okay. The reason I ask is because it would be a foolish move to get those tats, but. He's not the smartest, but he's full of honor, <laughs> Joe. What about you? What'd you go with? Um, I actually didn't spend it all because the, I, I focused on the net runner stuff and it's surprisingly, uh, it's, it's inexpensive because you have to then load it onto a limited rack on your cyber deck. So like, um, I'm not going to get too, too much into it now, but I basically, I, I just got some other programs. And so once we get into like net running, uh, ah. they might come up. There's some programs you start with, but then you could spend a little extra money to get a little more flexibility in how your programs work and what they do. Uh, but one thing I did get, uh, I will say, is um, a crash barrier, which is hardware. So there's no hardware in the regular setup. So I bought a piece of hardware that wires into my cyber deck, which will um, make me effectively immune to any program effect that forces me to jack out like without warning because if you just jack out without like doing it intentionally you get messed up (laughs) and it takes up two slots in your cyber deck instead of one but it only costs 100 eddies it's not an expensive thing but it does take up a lot of space in your cyber deck so i bought it i'm not sure if i'm always going to wire it in there or not uh but i was just terrified at the thought of being forced to jack out by a program yeah. uh, and just going like like a limp on the ground during the <laughs> middle of lobotomy. a yeah exactly you should play uh, Android Netrunner online after this session Jinteki.net tomorrow yeah, Jinteki.net uh, text me after the show <laughs> <laughs> Jinteki 
for the human touch. What is it? Something touch. like that. Something when like you that. need the human touch. When you need <laughs> the human touch. <laughs> last so, question. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say last question. Oh, Francis, what was your intelligence? Did you figure it out? Uh, no, sorry. I'm getting calls on my phone. I'm trying. I thought it was on. It's all yeah, your new phone. fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're blowing you up. <laughs> Francis, you got to tell them like disturb. I do. Just don't call during Look, the live show. They <laughs> found out Kate's recording. financial firm that she worked at. I saw Francis's you guys on the front page cell of Twitch. number. <laughs> Already. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. What are your characters' names? This is important. Who are they? Mm. You will be judged. By the cleverness of your name. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Give me that. So, wait, uh, what's the what's the deal? What I don't understand is, like, what are... Does everybody have, like, a regular first name and last name and then a handle? Or just a handle? It's up to like, you, man. The, yeah. I don't want to put common, limits on that. Because, like, here's the thing. I always think of, like, handles when I think of cyberpunk, right? Like, I love the hacker names in Android Netrunner and stuff yeah. like that. But when you read, like, the histories in this book of the setting they're all they're always first name last name people and sometimes they have little like side handles they go by but yeah you probably have a real name and a handle okay grant what do you yeah. think i just also want to point out that this is like the moment in the movie where the name of the movie is uttered this is new game who dis who dis make it count who dis? <laughs> what a beautiful view <laughs> to a kill uh all right, you know, yeah, you you tell me. You your name might be uh, Jimmy Christmas, but they call you Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> are we doing names, or are we doing like also describing the character? Oh no, just 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 your basic uh, name, and then uh, the qu for question for you, Kate. Do yeah. I name your bodyguard, or do you want to name them? I don't. I I want you to name them. Great. <laughs> Huge mistake. Huge mistake. Uh, yeah, Kate, excellent choice. <laughs> All right. Uh, but my character's name is Jade. 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 Just goes by Jade. Jade. Yep. Okay. Jade has a sister, May. Um, your bodyguard's name. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad You're, you asked. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked because I think it was something we should really establish at uh, uh, character creation. Because uh, this is someone that's uh, going to follow you around. Uh, right and ahead. his name is uh, Kevin Ragbone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big T.S. Eliot uh, fan. Uh, <laughs> and so he just kind of yeah, mashed it all together. His name's Kevin Ragbone. Kevin Ragbone. Writing yeah. <laughs> it down. You're going to go far, Ragbone. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I think so his handle should just Ragbone. be Ragbone. You're going to take the corporate world by storm, Ragbone. <laughs> <laughs> right, Did you hear G Ragbone made VP? Well, he his wagon to the right star. That jade is really going places. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, Jade uh, mentored him. I mean, there was that. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, he's very loyal. Uh, what? Uh, who else? Everybody could just jump right in. I got Ron Yolo. Oh, no my God. The best name. <laughs> the best name ever. <laughs> Ron Yolo. Ron Yolo. <laughs> just call me Ron. It's Ron, Ron Yolo, Yolo, the nomad. <laughs> Migrant and the, farmer. And Jean-Claude Yolo of the Yolo family. <laughs> Jean-Claude Yolo. Yeah, he, br yes, he brought Yolo, me up. Is Yolo like your birth name or is it just your family name? You're it just, is what's a your... family name. It is a family oh. name. The Yolo family goes back generations. Generations, yes. Generations, the Yolo family. Uh, <laughs> Skid, I'm sure you've got something great here. Uh, his name is Moto Lemmy Overclock. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy Overclock. Yeah. Uh, I love uh, it. Lemmy L L L E M M Y. Uh, yep. Lemmy. Moto. Can we call you Lemmy? Can we call sure. you Lemmy? Yep. I love it. I love it. Hello, Moto. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Moto. Hello, Moto. <laughs> That's great. Joe, I'm sure you've been up at night thinking about this. I've been so weeks. nervous about this very right moment. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me sick to my stomach. Um. Okay. I think I'm good. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm just trying to think. This is such a weird character. Like this big <laughs> gang, color wearing, intimidating, bald <laughs> dude. He's a, a jumble runner. of contradictions. <laughs> yes, <laughs> He's a real exactly. Mess. He's a jumble of <laughs> this intellectual idiot. 
but he's cool. <laughs> but he is very cool. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go with... Okay, so I'm going to do a name and a handle. Uh, okay. Because I want to have like a, a Netrunner handle, right? So his name is going to be Titus Sims. It's his name. Okay, nice. I like that. And nice. then... Strong. I have this idea that just came into my head about what this dude looks like, and his Netrunner name is going to be Quake. Oh, oh cool. that's good. Nice. I, like that. I just had this idea, and I was going to call him Earthquake, but then I was like, that's too long. <laughs> just go with Quake. Quake, yeah. Nice. Oh, I like that. Awesome. Uh, all right, so we have <laughs> the party. All right. We have Titus Sims, a.k.a. Quake, Moto Lemmy Overclock. <laughs> Ron Yolo, <laughs> Jade with her bodyguard, Kevin Ragbone, <laughs> <laughs> assistant to the regional manager, assistant <laughs> to the regional manager. Uh, guys, want to play a little bit before Wait, we wrap? Really? Up? Yeah. You it's play time. Little, it's play time. A, play a little ready? bit of ready? cyberpunk red. Oh, I got the book here, just burning a hole in my couch. Little uh, tease to jump in. Yeah. It's the only way. I'm so Joe, give me a C. Give me a bouncy C <laughs> on the one. I again, I, I don't know what that two. means. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jiminy, we didn't the roll the stats for my bodyguard. <gasps> oh, oh. How can we forget Kevin Ragnar's stats? I think you just have stats. to roll one dice and it's like a table. It's a table of stats, okay. yeah. Uh, all right, Jeff, say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that between sessions and uh, let you know at the beginning of next session because Kevin is just here for flavor to start. <laughs> Mr. Ragbone, if you don't know him. <laughs> Mr. Ragbone. All right. Uh, all right. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to drop in some classic, what I consider to be classic cyberpunk music. That's what I'm going to do. I like it. I feel like I should change my lighting. I really want to make things. Yeah. Get We're getting into the time of the red here. Let's really go all out red. Nervous. Nervous. Purple, <laughs> Look at Francis green. changing his lighting, shaking it up. Get Ooh, yeah. Dark. Yolo. <laughs> oh my All God. Right. That's because the sun is just going down there. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's oh exactly God, why. It's crazy. It's good. No, oh, it's sorry to interrupt your dark. beautiful <laughs> afternoon, Francis. With our it's all right. I wasn't stream. going outside anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you see one uh, beautiful sunset, you see them all. <laughs> It's <laughs> gorgeous sunset in the world. Right out of the window. <laughs> and which island is that again? Uh, do you see, does the sun set on a while? It is. Uh, it is time, and it is dark on the streets of Night City. It's always dark. And it's made all the more ominous by the sky, which still turns blood red at sunrise and at sunset. This is a constant reminder of that pocket nuke you were talking about, Joe, that went off in the middle of downtown Night City, marking the end of the fourth corporate war and the beginning of the time of the red. That was 21 years ago. Now it's 2044. And those who survived that blast, they've moved on with their lives. The Yolos and the uh, Sims families, they left. The world has rebuilt. It's rebuilding and the corporations are regaining their stranglehold on everything because that's what the corpse do. Isn't that right, Jade? Yep. <laughs> Even the United States is a, a patchwork imitation of its former self. And like so many of the other previously big players, they're not even a superpower anymore. We talked about this a little bit. The free states among the Pacific Northwest Corridor have united into their own Pacifica Confederation. But even they allow Night City to remain its own independent city-state. Because Night City, Night City plays by its own rules. It's an entry point for the rest of the world who doesn't want to deal with what's left of the U.S. They just want to go straight into Night City and deal with how the world operates there. It is a desperate, dark, and dangerous outpost where you survive by making the next big score or you die in the streets alone. Now, you know how I like to play these games. I like to visualize everything like it's a movie. So just imagine just a screen, digital readout across the lower right-hand corner. It says Tuesday, June 3rd, 2044. 
and then a foot steps into frame, splashing a red puddle. Must have been a storm earlier today. Blood rain pouring down into the streets, another remnant of this nuclear fallout. Yeah, occasionally there's blood rain. <laughs> The is weather is really yeah. It, it, it wasn't yeah. just flavor. It's yeah. it blood rain. It's yeah. red. It's, it's not red. actually blood, but well, it's yeah, but it has it's a still red rain. Wow, red. that's cool. It, yeah. Some shit. people say it's not actually blood. It's just uh, it's just rain from nuclear fallout. We call yeah, it. Blood don't worry, rain. blood. <laughs> don't worry. They'll hose it's you cool. off before you enter any building. If it's raining out. Uh, <laughs> but the weather is is calm right now. It probably rained earlier. Um, but while the weather is calm, the streets are anything but. So we followed this, these footsteps, this foot that we saw uh, through these garbage-strewn streets. You see a man with spiked hair pick up a severed arm from a gutter. He's like inspecting it to see if there's any leftover cyberware. He's ripping into the skin and trying to pull it out. And he turns towards us, this figure that we only see the feet. And he whips out a knife like an animal guarding his prey. He's left in the distance. And we just continue following these footsteps, following this figure past neon signs and dark alleyways up to a staircase leading down to a door, like a bar in the East Village. You can hear the sounds of Neo Techno thumping on the other side. Um, and above the wall, or above the door really on the wall, there's an emerald neon sign that says Ignition. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it does. That's exactly what it says. That's exactly what it says. That's exactly. Uh, so from that sign, buzzing, the sound of the music, our view swoops around to the feet that we've been following, up the leg, the torso, to the face of Skid's character. Skid, what does this dude look like? So, yeah, he's got fingerless gloves <laughs> he's got <laughs> sleeve tattoos I guess one arm is metal but it's aspirational he's gonna have skin on on it synth skin and a tattoo on it too he's wearing a uh, very colorful Hawaiian shirt and uh, I'll show you his hair <laughs> oh man <laughs> he's he a wig kind of guy <laughs> <laughs> Sort of Howard Sternish, circa 1988 hair. <laughs> Howard Stern. Private parts era. Howard Stern. Stern means slash from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little uh, Ario yes. Speedwagon in there. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, he's wearing round, reflective oh. green mirror shades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I love it. We oh we God. see this guy and 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 you walk in down the stairs into the bar and right when you do there's just this onslaught of strobe flashes and color and you know there's probably a hundred people packed into this tiny little bar you've been here before but you only get the sense of where people are when the light flashes to reveal them in the room so imagine just like you see people boom, show up in a light boom, show up in a light there and and the movement of the lights is intoxicating you can see people spacing out to the colors probably high on black lace dwarf <laughs> but you're you're the type of guy that's more interested in like how does the machinery work that's operating those lights mm. that's a pretty cool effect and you get lost in that you're here to meet someone you're here to meet a couple people you see the table on the back and you head towards it from there when we flash over to a bar where a guy is finishing paying for his drink he turns around looks towards us and it's Ron Yolo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Finish a drink, puts it down. What does Ron Yolo look like, Francis? Ron Yolo's got a tech hair mohawk running right over top of his head, right just in the center of his skull, uh, with his uh, diamond studded tongue piercing. And uh, he's gaunt. He's gaunt like he hasn't eaten in like weeks. <laughs> but he's. Uh, He's uh, he's got his light tats that kind of just kind of ripple up on and off. They they have a uh, the insignia of his family, uh, the JC. Yeah, what is? Claude. I was gonna say, what's the yellow insignia? <laughs> it's just the JC. A spark plug. The, the John JC JC tat that fi that fires up every once in a while, and uh, yeah, he's got his 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 leathers on and. Uh, 
Scan in the crowd to see what's going on. Oh. Who do I see? Well, I was going to say, did you have a long ride coming in today? Did you, uh, would you oh. take the ground car? Gyrocopter? Oh. Jet oh, ski? Yeah. Road no, bike? No, no. I, I, I took my motorbike. I took my motorbike. I, I broke off from the convoy outside of town, and I came in on a mission. On a mission to this club. Mission to this to, club. Trying to, trying to meet somebody. Yeah, you know where you're going. You see uh, who you're supposed to meet. Do you order another drink? Oh, yes. All right, so you get another drink, slam some eddies down, and mm. walk off in that direction. Mm. As you walk away, we just <laughs> fast forward down to the other bar where Quake is standing, taking in the scene. Joe, what does he look like? Uh, now he we know is. <laughs> he is. He stands out. Uh, he's huge. Uh, you would think just looking at him that he might be like the bouncer of this place. Uh, <laughs> just like taking, I'm trying to take everything I've ever thought of about a net runner and throwing it out the window <laughs> uh, in terms of how he looks. Uh, he's like six, six, 310 pounds, <laughs> like an <laughs> offensive lineman in the NFL. Bald. <laughs> uh, he's got, um, I did uh, spend a, a couple of EV. He's got uh, silver EMP threading in his bald head coming back. Uh, and this long, like down to almost his chest, well-groomed beard that is dyed electric blue. He's wearing uh, shades uh, like, uh, you know, yeah, like sci-fi shades that are red. And... Uh, yeah, he's just looking around. He's wearing gang colors, bright, <laughs> like yellow, red, and orange explosion gang colors. Sponsor comes up, sir, I, I, I didn't see you come in. You can't wear those in here. <laughs> yeah, he looks, he looks down at the bouncer, and it's just like... <laughs> um, he, uh, yeah, I mean, he's wearing... because So, like, the, the gang colors he's wearing, like, underneath his, his just, like, T-shirt is woven in with light armor jack armor so it'll actually protect uh, against uh, bullets and stuff like that he's wearing um, jeans basically like uh, denim uh, sort of jeans that are like silver and then yeah he's got a very heavy pistol that is holstered on the side uh, and on the other side a far more dangerous weapon his virtuality goggles uh, <laughs> just in case he needs to hack it in systems. <laughs> just dangling uh, off your yeah, belt. He's, he's a huge, huge dude. Not at all what I pictured. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you slam right. a drink down, walk in the same direction uh, that uh, Ron and uh, Lemmy walked? And then from there, we kind of jump cut Ocean's Eleven style around to the door where the bouncer steps aside and in strides Jade. With Kevin Ragbone by her side. <laughs> <laughs> Happy hour. Uh, <laughs> Jade, what is what does Jade look like, Kate? So I thought she would be. I know you guys do this. I thought she would be played by Florence Favor, who plays Julie Mao. Um, so oh, she's nice. got short, oh. curly hair, kind of like somewhere around her chin, and the she's kind of got curly bangs. And it's tech hair, so right now she's got it like on for being in here. It's kind of got some like fading colors going on. She's in professional clothing, but she's not at work, so she's got like a deep V neck, but the back is like very deep V. And it's professional wear, but it's like luxury. She's got very nice shoes, she's got nice nails done. <laughs> um, yeah, and she walks in and she gets herself and her escort a drink. That's nice. And, uh, <laughs> Kevin is wearing a all black suit with the initials KR on the lapel. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just he's just looking around, making sure that Jade's safe. You get a drink for Kevin and yourself, and then you head to this table as well, where your three companions have gone. All of you have a scheduled meeting with a well-known fixer in the area uh, named Hornet. He's not someone you've worked oh. with before, but uh, he's a fixer, but excuse me, he's a fixer that you've been dealing with lately, recommended you to him, 
he set up this meeting. Uh, he's pretty well known in Night City, so yeah, you know this is this like is a, a famous guy. This is a yeah. guy like from way back in the the day. This is awesome. Yeah, so if you're an up-and-coming crew and you get a, a chance to meet with uh, the infamous Hornet, uh, Hornet, you take that meeting. Uh, so <laughs> you walk over there and he's seated at a table that's kind of wedged into a corner in the back. And again, the lights just kind of come up from time to time and light him up. But he's got his own candle on the table. Very, uh, very discreet. Standing behind him uh, with her back to the wall is a tall, gaunt woman wearing a mask, and she has a mono katana strapped to her back. You would all know this is his bodyguard, Fox. She's an infamous solo in her own right that kind of came up when he came up. Uh, you don't mess with Fox. She's got a fucking katana on her back. <laughs> One by one, <laughs> Ocean's Eleven style, you all join him at the table. He has several metal plates implanted across his forehead and cheeks that are in like perfect symmetry with each other. His jacket is yellow and black stripes like a hornet's abdomen. And when he smiles, you see all his teeth have been filed down into sharp points. Once you're all seated, he doesn't waste any time and jumps right in. He's like... I don't know if you've seen the scream sheets, but the turf war between the Red Chrome Legion and the Iron Sights reached a head the other night. Total bloodbath. Plenty dead on both sides, and a few dozen innocents got popped in the crossfire. C SWAT and NCPD moved in quick to shut it down, but this is just the beginning. The tension between these two gangs has been building up for a while, and now that it's come to a head, it won't be long before this boils out of the combat zone and escalates quickly. It's obviously loud, and he's talking over the music. I don't want to yell into the mic, but imagine that's uh, the scene here. He's talking over the music, but also doesn't want everybody hearing this. He continues, he's like, I don't know what you guys know about either of these gangs, but the Red Chrome Legion has a bad habit of grabbing up other people's territory, and that's what they've been doing with the Iron Sights. Of course, that's what they do, because that's what fascists do. They take things that don't belong to them. But the Iron Sights have seen a resurgence in membership in recent years and don't take kindly to the Chrome's takeovers. This has been going on for a while, so the question on everyone's minds is, what happened to make this Cold War hot? Watch this. He drops a cube onto the table and boom, a hollow screen pops off of it. And in the screen, you see a video of a, of a man who's got a camera and he's kind of like ducking down behind crates in this huge abandoned railway station. And he's like filming a group of people that are talking to a mysterious looking cabal of men all dressed in black suits. And the footage is all shaky. And then there's a handoff between the men in the suits and the other group. And the guy filming turns the camera on himself and just mouths like, shit. And then the film cuts. Hornet continues. He's like, this is a reporter by the name of Jericho Hunt. Yeah. He went undercover. Isn't that a great name? It's exactly <laughs> what his name is. Jericho went undercover on the Jer outskirts of town to an old nomad operated train station. Looks at Yolo when he says no, man. And he filmed this handoff between the Iron Sights and this group. A couple days later, NCPD reports that the Red Chrome Legion hit an unmarked truck coming into Night City. That truck was owned by the Iron Sights and contained whatever was in that handoff. So all this recent bloodshed is likely because of that hit. He leans in. This is where we come in. While they're killing each other in the streets, I have someone who is interested in that red chrome cargo and is willing to pay handsomely to the crew that can get it for him. It's a dangerous job, but it is quite lucrative. 2,000 eddies to the crew, if you want it. He leans back, whispers something to Fox, and then just looks for an answer. Each? No, 2,000 of the whole crew. You should know that, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm insulted, Jade. Uh, you should know that. Hey, so that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of money, but I'm sorry. Did, is this Ron Yolo? Did you see your name was Ron Yolo? It looks at Ron. Yeah, yep, that's right. You're the Ron Yolo. <laughs> that's that's correct. You heard me. I can't you believe it. I can't believe I'm sitting at a table with fucking Ron Yolo. My <laughs> God, this man. Have you heard this about this man? He's like a 
combination of Mad Max and Mahatma Gandhi is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, the money sounds great. I'm, I'm all more for the money. God, Ron Yolo. Mm. Hey, well, you know, uh, 2000, we could do a little better than 2000, right? 2000, that's that's barely going to get you a couple of convoys together, you know what I mean? Come on, how about we do three? Do three for the whole crew. We'll do three. Don't press your luck, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a luck of sex. Hey, I'm going to push you that line out because it just says a great. Don't press your luck, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted all game. I want to hear that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Two thousand is, is, a, is a hefty sum, uh, but it's, okay. it's well within your right to try and bargain. <clears throat> um, and he's just like, "Listen, uh, I'm already taking a cut for doing this. I can't do it on my own, but I've set it up. If you want the job, this is a good gig, and it's the type of gig that if you do well, you'll get more gigs." 2000 could buy you uh, maybe some food instead of spending all your money on light up tats. <laughs> sure, he's a burger. All right, I'm in. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> what is it you expect us to find? What's in this red chrome cargo? What you think's in there? Well, that's not my business, so it's not yours either. If I had to guess, it's probably some hefty military hardware. Basically, it's something a lot of people want, and that's all that matters. Right. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Jade. Sure. Good. All right. Let me tell you what the score is. It's pretty much your standard smash and grab, but there are a few wrinkles. The shipment we're after consists of four large crates with DNA encoded locks. You need to access them, retrieve them, and then you need to be very careful transporting them back. These crates are being sent to a Red Chrome Legion facility in an abandoned town on the northern outskirts of the city via the Hammerhead, which is a heavily armored Militech cargo train that the gang has hijacked. Once it reaches its destination, a tech looks in the direction of Lemmy, employed by the Red Chrome Legion, can break these DNA encoded locks. But that cargo will not reach its destination. At approximately 9.35 p.m. tomorrow night, there's a stretch of the track that runs parallel to another track for about an hour and 15 minutes. I have a train that will be running on that track. You'll be on that train. Once the two trains pull close to each other, you need to get on that locomotive, seize the cargo, get it back onto my train in less than 75 minutes before the trains go their separate ways. Any questions? The video that he showed us was there like a exchange with one package in it? It looked like there was a lot uh, of, of boxes around where they were, but there was a handoff that might have been either of money or of something in a briefcase. But it's unclear. If he's saying four crates, it probably was more stuff going on. So either w the briefcase contained the payment or something that was too, uh, too volatile maybe to go in the crates or too important. But if you need four crates, then there was probably more than what you saw in the video actually being handed off. So uh, I know these uh, Red Chrome Legion, like they're some bad blokes and they've all got, uh, I mean, really like looks around the table and it's just like, you know, they're legitimate fascists. It's like if someone took the enemies list to the Southern Poverty Law Center and shook it into a barrel of flaming shite. So we've got, I've got my own reasons for hating them, but I'm just wondering, like, are you just doing this out of the goodness of your heart, or have you got uh, other artillier motives, if it's not too personal? I just need the cargo. That's what I get paid for. I don't know. Maybe I'll sleep a little better at night knowing those guys got screwed. If anybody deserves it, it's the Red Chrome Legion. Well, there are net weaknesses, if any. Is there a network or a local? Uh, sounds to me like it's out there in the open. How are we supposed to get these cargo uh, out of there? If it's a Militech train, there's no doubt access points on it for you to jack into. In terms of getting the cargo back onto my train, you just gotta be careful. Two moving trains, throw so, it, catch it, be safe. Sounds like meat space hell to me. 
Oh yeah, oh, I'm my. sure it's heavily guarded. But that's why it's 2,000 Eddies. I wanted to ask if you could tell us anything more about how it's guarded, if you have any intel on that. I don't. I just know that they uh, would never leave something like this unattended. Now is the whole train packed with men? I don't know. That's why I'm not going. That's why you're getting 2,000 Eddies to find out. Hmm. So we just... Get... Oh, sorry. Can we get more information on uh, this? Is there a place we can go or someone we can talk to that can give us information on how to pull this off? I mean, everybody's talking about this on the streets. The war between them. I'm sure you could jack into the nearest data pool and find out some more information about the two gangs. But what's happening on the Hammerhead? You're just going to have to be there. And that train leaves the station tomorrow night. The Hammerhead's the name of the train, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so and it's owned by Militech, and Militech was one of the two groups that was involved with the uh, Fourth Corporate War. Yep. Them and Arasaka. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me get this straight. You got a train we're going to be on running for one hour next to this other, next to this hammerhead. 75 minutes. We got to get on to the other train, figure out how to get that cargo off, get it back onto your train in 75 minutes. Safe without there. knowing anything about what's on that hammerhead. That's the score. <sighs> I was uh, told that you guys wanted to play with the big boys. <laughs> I personally, yeah, but this is, uh, I don't know. So it's pretty dangerous, but it is a good payout. The big yeah. boys usually have more information. Um, do you know maybe around the size of these boxes? Were they the, si the size in the background that we saw in the video, or? I think one or two of you should be able to carry them. Hmm. It's not gonna be easy, but I think it's doable. If you're able to take out whatever guards they have, you should be able to spend the rest of your time just safely transporting it. The tracks run very close to each other, so as long as you get it done before the trains go their separate ways, you should be able to take your time if you eliminate any possible threats. And who's driving your train? I'll have a driver. He'll a driver you. you trust, I assume? Yes. I wouldn't send you out there without someone I trust. And the only thing we can assume about the other train is that there are a lot of guys on there trying to guard what we're trying to get. This is a cargo that a lot of people want. I'm sure they have people watching it. Mm. All right. And by 9.35 tomorrow night... Hopefully those people will no longer exist. I'm in. Sounds good. Right, I'm in. Let's do it. Fantastic. What about your man? He talks, he uh, says to Jade. He's my escort. He comes with me. I don't do a lot of business with uh, corporate types. I don't want to get tied up in any uh, executive entanglements that I'm not aware of. Are you cool, Jade? I'm so cool. Like, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> She's, She's got you. these, like, mirror shades on that are, like, small, because, like, that's what's cool right now is to wear small sunglasses. And she just, like, puts them down with her nail. What did she say? Oh, my God. <laughs> She's just like, my boss doesn't care what I do. This has nothing to do with where I work and what I do outside of nine to five. So yeah, don't worry about it, we're cool. He comes with okay. me though. He works for me, not the corporation. Why? What's his name? Kevin Ragbone. <laughs> <laughs> she says, embarrassingly. <laughs> he looks up at me, he's like, Ragbone, you cool? <laughs> Yeah, what does Kevin nods. say? What does Kevin nods. say? Yeah. What is it? He Rag gives Rag a very cool nod, like how. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nod <laughs> looked so cool. <laughs> Rag bone, you cool. Uh, you, don't have to, you don't gotta worry about Jade. She's all right. I hate literally everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Jade. Wait, did She's we know each other? Before on the streets, yeah. Okay. You're my backdoor contact where I buy oh, programs. Right, 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 sorry. Can't just be buying programs off the street. Got to get them from the corporate warehouses. Jade hooks it up. 
She is cool as shit. Show him the back tattoo. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about with that. <laughs> I don't get my hands dirty in that way. <laughs> the amount of illegal shit she's done, I could list here vocally, out loud, is, is astounding. It's staggering. <laughs> he, uh, he looks at uh, Lemmy, and uh, and he's like, I don't know much about you. Looks down his notes, Moto Lemmy Overclock. That's right, Moto Lemmy Overclock. Three You've not heard of me? No, I'm sorry I haven't. You haven't ah, made a name on, for yourself in Night City yet. I don't know. Yeah, I did know some overclocks, though, but I don't think they're around anymore. A couple uh, of young guys. Ah, yeah, right. No, probably no relation. Are you cool? No, I'm not cool at the least. Tell me, <laughs> do you know, just a, a, a side here. You ever heard of uh, Anthrax? Not yeah. the uh, not the disease, the the band. That's a band from like seventy years ago. But no, yeah, right, like the old, like old, old metal band. You ever heard of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're fucking brilliant. I love them. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I think you'll do just fine. <laughs> okay, wait. Don't a, worry. He's a, he's a genius. Shoehorn in, shoehorn in your character exposition. <laughs> <laughs> really well done. <laughs> No, no, look, mate. Moto Lemmy Overclock's got your back. <laughs> Moto Lemmy Overclock. <laughs> he looks over. He's like, what family are you with, YOLO? My family's been through some hardships. Uh, we have, uh, we used to be great. We used to be well-known nomads. We used to be we, out we there. We used to be great. <laughs> we, we used to be out there in the frontier. Just, you know, running... All kinds of goods, farm goods, products. So many goods. <laughs> so smuggling much like there's produce. no tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we smuggled from the free states of the uh, Pacifica region down to free Texas, all the way up to the Boss Wash Corridor. We were everywhere. <laughs> we were everywhere. We you were just running your glowing JC tattoo. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me rip off my sleeves, show you my glowing tattoos here. Is that uh, John Claude? That is, that is, he oh, was, great. he was, for all intents and purposes, my mentor, my father. Oh, yeah, no, right. I did some work with John claude back in the day. You know, you know John claude Yolo too? I do. That's a legend. Yeah. yeah. He's to, <gasps> a cool He dude. was, he was, nah, he's been disgraced and exiled long ago. Oh. I just want to, uh, I want him to be remembered for the, the hero he was and the, great family that he built well any friend of John Claude's I think I can trust for this job what about you Quake what's your story how'd you get mixed up with these this crew let me guess you got some exec getting you back door into (laughs) 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 that old story classic tale (laughs) what you just run some programs (laughs) (laughs) My story is my own business. I don't think you need to worry about it too much. Suffice it to say, I got beef with the Red Chrome Gang. I'm happy to strike them a blow whenever it fits my fancy. And it does right now. I have business with them. Family business. We go way back. So don't you worry, I'm gonna get your cargo. But I also might leave a little present for them as well. A little extra. Just a hello from my clan to theirs. Let's leave it at that. You can trust me because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And I don't have any friends. (laughs) You hate everyone. I know, I know. Uh, Listen, that's good that you got beef with them. It's going to give you more motivation for this mission but don't do anything crazy and that goes for all of you especially you ragbone <laughs> you need to keep a low prof profile between tonight and tomorrow night don't need any extra heat coming up on you and as he says that a uh, bouncer comes up to your table and it's like uh, it's one of your names uh, Moto Ah, right. No, it's uh, one of my names, Moto. Uh, there's a guy outside, and he seems pretty angry, and he's looking for you. Oh, no. You're not yeah. telling... 
We see like uh, balding, like male pattern baldness, steel teeth, looking rage, look on his face. He says his name is Uncle Dan. Fucking <laughs> Uncle Dan. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Dan's right outside. Yeah. He's here. I didn't so think he's here. We get to see him so fast. Oh, God, he's oh, he is pissed. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were going to have to wait two weeks to see Uncle Dan. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, amazing. Good night, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, Congrats uh, to the winners. <laughs> <laughs>